Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are San Diego. The new look Padres are in camp full of optimism. And today, Eric Hosmer will make his first start in a San Diego uniform. The Padres covet his proven talents and leadership abilities as the club looks to its new identity this spring. And there are several players fighting for a limited number of spots on this roster. And there's no better place to prove yourself than here. Padres versus Mariners next on Fox Sports San Diego. It's a beautiful day in the desert as Cactus League Baseball continues. The Padres are back in Peoria at the Peoria Sports Complex, where the Padres and Seattle Mariners will knock heads today in spring training baseball. Welcome inside the stadium, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo along with Mark Sweeney. Welcome to Padres Baseball. Well, a huge signing for the Padres during the offseason as here is Eric Hosmer. And today he will get the start. A huge pickup for the Padres. I think everyone is excited. Why? Because he has the resume to back it. He has had some moments at Petco Park. Even though being a career American leaguer, he came to Petco Park last year and not only drove it to right field, but also left center, which is, that's the approach you're getting. You're going to hear about the on-base percentage. I think that adds a different element to the offense, but it's the leadership, as you said, Don, going to be the difference maker, trying to mold this young group of Padres into what is going to be possibly a championship club moving forward. Now, Eric Hosmer has the ability to not only look good in the uniform, but also he's looked good in the NL West. He has very good numbers, and some of those good numbers are against Clayton Kershaw, which really is helpful. Can't wait to watch today. He is at first base. He'll be batting fourth. And back for us, we return to Peoria. It'll be Bob Scanlon to look into the Eric Hosma era that begins right now.
Luke Moore will send it down to field level and Bob Scanlon. Bob? Well, thank you, Don. As you and Sweeney's already noted, an exciting day for the Padres and for their big off-season acquisition, Eric Hosmer, who gets a chance to see live competition in a Padres uniform for the first time since signing his eight-year contract. Now, can it be intimidating when you sign a deal like that to have all those expectations put on your shoulders? Well, here's what Haas himself had to say about that. You know, I know when uh, you accept one of those contracts, it's, it goes a lot farther than just producing on the field. It's, uh, you know, a lot to do with helping the young guys in the locker room and uh, just being there for them. So uh, I fully intend to, to be that guy and uh, not only on the field, but off the field as well. Well, there's no question that he's ready to embrace being a leader and a mentor towards these young players. And there's been a lot of talk about what he'll provide with the bat to this team. Hey, what I'm really excited about is what he's going to be able to provide on the defensive side. You see that gold patch on the back of his glove? You only get to wear one of those if you're a gold glove winner. And he has four of those bad boys in his trophy room back home. And when you take into account that the Padres rotation may include Clayton Richard, Luis Perdomo, Denelson Lamette and maybe Tyson Ross, all prolific ground ball pitchers, to have somebody over at first base that can pick it for you and help you get out of those big innings, help you stay longer in the game and take the pressure off that bullpen. It could be huge for this young ball club. Padres, Mariners, coming up next right here on Fox Sports San Diego. James packs it on the mound today for the M's. 29-year-old left-hander, very talented left-hander. He's coming off a career high in starts last year. Also, his ERA was very good, 2.98 ERA in only 136 innings. That's going to be the key because he's going to be slotted behind King Felix in that rotation most likely. They need a big year 
out of the starting rotation in James Paxton. Of course, Felix hit by a line drive yesterday. Always scary to have an injury in spring training, and that's the last thing the Mariners need right now is to have King Felix go down. But Paxton getting the start today as we get a look at some of the Padres regulars and newcomers, and certainly one of the guys we're excited about is Freddie Galvis, the shortstop, who gets the start today. What a breath of fresh air, obviously, with the ground ball rate that you talk about, and especially Bob Scanlon touched on that. These starting pitchers that induce those ground balls are going to be very happy that Freddie Galvis is at shortstop. Well, check out the Mariners defensively today behind James Paxton. Left to right in the outfield today is Ian Miller. D. Gordon, who is in the outfield for the first time in his major league career here during the spring after coming over from the Marlins. John M. Dioli is in right field with Kyle Seeger at third base, Gene Segura at short, Robinson Cano at second base, Mike Ford at first base, and doing the catching is Mike Zanino for James Paxton. Well, the Padres have been on the road the last couple of days, returning here to Peoria Stadium. Now, it's going to be interesting, Don, to see what happens to D. Gordon. You can remember him at, with the Marlins. He was a second baseman, an all-star second baseman, now shifting to the outfield. Very good athletically, but that is a challenge when you start to move from the infield to the outfield. That, there's no one behind you other than the fence, so there's a lot of worries. The Mariners have to have him prove that he can handle center field. Great athlete, good speed. We're just going to see how he does out there as the spring continues. Manuel Margot ready to lead it off here for the Padres today. And he played 126 games last year for San Diego. And ended up hitting 263 for the Padres. Paxton ready to work with the first pitch of the ball game. It's right in there for strike one. Well, Margot, very impressive last year as his maturation period continues and he gets another year under his belt in the big leagues and a chance to play on an everyday basis. Well, I think this is the player that really excites me. And then taking that next step as a second year player is going to be pretty interesting. It's a daunting task to be a leadoff hitter, but that league ends up adjusting to you. You have to adjust back. I would imagine that he feels a great bit more comfortable coming into spring training this year. Yeah, I think what it comes down to when you get in that locker room and you feel like you have a year under your belt, I don't think you have a comfort level, but there's awareness of what's happening, especially coming from a new organization from the Boston Red Sox and now with the Padres. I think he feels like he's more settled in this year. To right field as Andy Oli is over to make the catch. Shy of the track for out number one here the first inning. Now, Freddy Galvis, a short-handed shortstop coming up here for the Padres. Six seasons with the Philadelphia Phillies. Last year, 12 home runs, 61 runs batted in. And much like Hosmer was known for his leadership abilities while in Philadelphia. Big I think, fan. Yeah, I think that's a common theme, too, because we're going to touch on Eric Hosmer as that guy. But there's other elements within the clubhouse that you're going to have to have. And I think Freddie Galvis is going to be very influential with some of these young stars in the making for the Padres. Now, Gavis mentioned the 12 home runs, 61 RBIs. Last year played in every game, 162 games for the Phillies. So plans on doing the same this year with the Padres. Hard to find some of those guys today playing every day. Yeah, and you want to have those guys that, that definitely want to play that, but it's Andy's job to be able to throttle those guys back and get them to be healthy as they can. But when it comes down to it, I think that goes into his makeup. He wants to play every day, but he also wants to be that guy that's the leadership guy, and, and credibility has a lot to do with it. Mentioned the early schedule this year. Of course, the regular season earlier than ever before, and thus the spring training game starting at the end of February. Uh, how different do you think that would be for you, especially where there was very little time for workouts before games actually started? Yeah, I think that's what Andy's going to probably take an, a, a better approach at is throttle some of these everyday players back. You know, the Will Myers, this is back-to-back -back day for Will Myers, but you have to be cognizant of what these guys need to get ready. A base of at bats, but you don't want to stretch them out too early. Popped up foul off to the right out of play, and it hangs here at three and two. Now, Will Myers getting the start in right field yesterday did have an error, but uh, Andy Green saying today was very pleased with what he saw yesterday, and it continues to be an acclamation for 
Will Myers to back to the outfield. This is driven deep and far to left field. Back goes Miller, and that's going to one-hop the wall. Miller will play the carom, but into second base goes Freddie Galvis with a double and a good at bat right there. Well, Don, we've touched on his glove work, but also has pop in his bat. See the 3-2 pitch down and in, being able to drive this a one-hop off the wall. But Freddie Galvis has some pop in his bat. He's going to be able to drive the ball out of the ballpark, but also those extra base hits. Good at bat by Galvis. Got to be interesting to see where he ends up in the lineup, whether he will be the two-hitter here between Margot and Myers, as he is today. And here is Will Myers. Getting acclimated to right field now. Back to the outfield for Will. Was an all-star as a first baseman. Was still continuing to get used to the position, and now that's over. Well, he's been in the outfield. Uh, I think when you first describe Will Myers, he's very athletic. So I don't think it's a worry, the mentality of the Padres. But he had to be willing to make that move to the outfield for them to sign an Eric Hosmer. In the air to right center field, back goes Andioli on to the warning track to make the catch out there, shy of the wall, tagging at second and moving to third is Galvis on the long fly out to right field. Wind is blowing in that direction. Uh, Myers out number two. Well, Eric Hosmer in his Padres debut, digging in. Three eighteen a year ago, 25 home runs, 94 runs batted in, and talking about playing every day, he did. Talk to Eric before the ball game. Very excited about getting this first game under his belt. Been waiting the last couple of days, and today his debut. Well, it's got to be exciting for him too, uh, with all of what went on in the off season, because he signed very late, and the difference of. This free agent period this offseason probably had to hang a lot of these guys in balance. So mentally, where is he at? He's embraced every bit of it, and obviously he's excited for his new challenges. Now runner third here with two down. And Hosmer hits a soft liner to short, caught there by Segura to end the inning. Padres leave a runner at third. Mariners are coming up in Peoria, Arizona. the mound. Padres starter who made 32 starts a year ago, Clayton Richard. Count of one and one here to D. Gordon leading it off for the Mariners. 
An awful lot for the Marlins. And grounds went through the right side of the right field for a base hit. Now last year, Richard just shy of 200 innings, Mark Swinney, 197 and a third for Clayton Richard. And that was essential. Obviously, the veteran left-hander is coming here with the record, and you see the starts, 32 starts. That tells the story for me. You have to eat up innings, but also be that example. Look for him today to have a certain agenda on his mind. He has a simple plan when he takes the mound during his early starts in spring training. And then also watch for the fastball to be coming into play, that location. But also we saw him a little bit throwing a top of the zone last year. Look for that today as well. well Clayton last year finishing 8-15, and 15, a 4.79 earned run average. Signing the extension in September to continue as a member of the Padres. And Last year, as he checks on Gordon, eight pickoffs led last year, and that led all Major League Baseball. That comes into play here with the speed of Gordon at first base. He has tested early in this game. Richard with two complete games last year. On the check over there at first base. It's those funny things that you think about, too. The pickoff play, but Eric Hosmer hasn't seen the pickoff yet. So as a first baseman, that is difficult. Imagine you could get picked off too. It's exactly. <laughs> so you have to ho hold your ground a little bit because of the familiarity of what that move really is in game situations. But this this is right here. Now Eric Hosmer has the ability to not only see that pickoff move, but also how you can apply the tag. Always interested as to where the first baseman stands as this one is driven to deep left field. Ranchi Cordero back looking up and it is gone into the berm area. A two-run home run for Gene Segura. Fast start for the Mariners as they jump on top two to nothing. And a single and a home run. First two hitters for the Mariners here in the bottom of the first inning. Well, 1-1 one, one pitch. And we talked about fastball command elevated right there. Clayton Richard likes to induce the ground balls, but he's going to have to show that he can pitch at the top of the zone. And you see Segura taking it out to left field. So 2 nothing Seattle on top here early, and here is Robinson Cano. A reflective lineup today of what uh, the Mariners have to offer in their starting nine today. Yeah, and you'll see that early in the spring to try to get a feel for these guys, especially where they're hitting in the lineup. But every... In individual manager has a difference. Cano sprays one foul over by the Mariners dugout and they are housed on the third base side here at Peoria Sports Complex. Oh, Don, those veteran guys like to play the home games in spring training. <laughs> they don't have to go to every game. No. So you'll look at the schedule. You'll start seeing the the trips that are you're, you're going across the valley. They'll want to play those home games, get those at bats so they can have those little bit of off days down here in Arizona. I will say, though, in the Cactus League, it seems like some of the regulars travel a little bit more than they do in the Grapefruit League, where the trips are a little longer they in Florida. Are. And that has an influence of it. You definitely want to take those shorter trips if you do have to go on the road. But, yes, they'll, they'll indicate what they need to the managers and in the communication part of it. It's a process for these veteran players during spring. High expectations again for the Mariners. It seems like that has been the case the last couple of years, and Scott Service hoping that they can stay healthy. That's the biggest thing for the Mariners. In the rotation. Yes. Uh, we touched on it earlier. The rotation has to be healthy. They have to get some quality starts from the starting rotation. A walk here to Keno. So a runner aboard here for the Mariners with nobody out in the first. And another very good hitter coming up in Nelson Cruz. We talked about the early start of spring training in games. What do you think pitchers are at this stage of their getting ready for the season so early? Well, I think uh, the focus, and you hear it across the board, is fastball command first. The breaking ball pitches aren't going to have that consistency. But what you really want to see is from Clayton Richard, he's not worried about the numbers because that's when you start talking about a veteran guy and the mentality. There's a purpose in his start. Yes, he'd like to work on the running game, show the pickoff move, have guys on base at times. 
But you can see trying to elevate those pitches. I think he did it early in the year last year, went away from pitching at the top of the zone and went to his strength, which is inducing those ground balls. But you're going to see him working that. Darren Balsley, the pitching coach, knows how important that is to give that different look, to be able to get those hitters off of that two-seamer that's down in the strike zone. You have to change the eye level, and that's what Clayton wants to work on coming into spring training. Very well could be the opening day starter for the Padres heading into this season. Thirty two starts last year I mentioned the innings nearly 200. As you look at the numbers for Nelson Cruz always a good gauge does he get to 30 does he get to 100 yes 39 and 119 home runs and RBIs and he strikes out this time looking. So there's the first out for Clayton Richard it's a K. One down here in the bottom of the first inning. Well, we touched on the fastball come in, and you saw a couple elevated fastballs to Cruz, and then he finishes them off with that two-seamer in on the right-handers. Very good pitching by Clayton Richard there. So one down, Cano at first, held on over there by Hosmer, and it brings up Kyle Seeger. 154 games for the Mariners' third baseman a year ago, and almost ducked into that pitch. Yeah, two complete games last year for Clayton Richard. Only five players with more than one. And Clayton was one of those guys and what is kind of a lost start these days. The complete game effort for starting pitchers. Well, you never question what Clayton Richard's bringing to each start. Obviously, he's prepared. He has an agenda, even with Austin Hedges, his catcher. I thought they had a very good chemistry last year. But it really comes down to consistency for Clayton Richard. And he asks a lot from himself when it comes down to that. On the ground, sharply hit the second. Perella flips on a hop to second for one. On to first for two. And a nice pick by Freddy Galvis on a tough throw from Perella. Two runs on the two-run home run for Segura. It's 2-0 Seattle. with the Mariners on top two to nothing and leading it off is Jose Perella saw the bulk of his major league time last year with the Padres in left field and gets the start today at second base Andy Green wanted to see uh, what he can do here where he fits in and if he can play some infield again that certainly would help his chances well the outfield got a little bit more crowded with the signing of Eric Hosmer now the pieces start moving around but the importance of what Perella did last year with his at bats you have to find opportunities for him to get in there. I think he's going to be shifted from the outfield and as we're seeing today at second base. 
83 games a year ago in the big league for the Padres, spending part of the year in El Paso. 10 homers, 40 RBIs, and finished the year hitting at 288. Oh, I loved his approach. I loved his energy that he brought. But he is going to have to show and give confidence to Andy Green defensively, which I think is a priority when it comes down to the Padres now. You have to find opportunities for him offensively, but you have to show you can handle it. Handle those position changes. A lot of competition in spring training this year. It's always a good thing, it seems. I think that's great. And, and sometimes it's, it, it, it causes a, a, a chain of, of events to happen. Eric Cosmer, we're talking about that signing. So Will Myers shifts. Now you're going to start getting guys to start pointing around, going, how am I going to get at bats personally? And how am I going to fit onto this club? Zanino doing a little coaching there back to James Paxton who missed that last pitch pointing to his shoulder. Close pitch. Morella takes it and it's a full count. Well early in this, this camp you're going to start seeing that fastball in and out location wise and just inside to Perella, but that's just the awareness as a hitter. You're starting to look in now. Let's see if he goes with the off-speed away here. Down to first, ball four, first walk allowed by Paxton. And Perella down to first base. He'll bring up Hunter Renfro. Now Hunter last year in 122 games. Did spend a little bit over a month at AAA towards the end of the year in El Paso. But still, 26 home runs on the year last year for Renfro. I saw that home run power yesterday's game here, and he almost mishit the ball to center field and still went out of the ballpark. We talked about the crowded outfield. He may be on the move uh, with Myers playing now in right field to perhaps left field for Hunter Renfro where he was yesterday. So that's going to be important. Changing different ways. You think of him as an outfielder, but shifting side this the ball comes off hitters bats a little differently it's gonna be adjustment for hunter renfro as well because he's not only played right field but center field at times but that left field position a lot of outfielders talk about that's the hardest spot when it comes off that bat the left handers slicing it down the line it's gonna be interesting how he handles himself and left he has got the great arm out there in the outfield and the great power Oh, well, the big change for me, and I think Matt Stairs, the hitting coach, the new hitting coach for the Padres, is going to have to work those at-bats against right-handers. You see him going against lefty today, James Paxton. I think the adjustment in what the organization wants to see is him and his at-bats getting better against his right-handers. To third base, Seager's going to try and start it. The second for one on the first for two. On the horn they go on the double play. Two down here in the second inning. Not only is the infield uh, very good offensively for the Mariners, very good defensively as well. Yeah, it really anchors it with Seager at third base. Very athletic. You see Segura at shortstop. Watch the exchange here. And Robinson Cano, the veteran at second base. A nice exchange and the double play. So two down bases empty and it brings up Austin Hedges. Talk about a full year in the big leagues and having that under your belt coming into this season. And how long was it really till you felt like you were, or maybe it never happened, yeah. <laughs> that you were a big leaguer and I, here to stay? I think about it. Really, four or five years it felt that I, I needed that. Yeah. But, you know, we touched on Manny Margot and the comfort of coming in, but also Austin Hedges. He came in with a huge body of work last year and the consistency he had to just kind of develop the pitching staff. I think there's a comfort level, especially for Austin Hedges coming in this year and feeling very comfortable about how he has to go about his business to play a substantial amount of the season from the catching position. Very tough to do. And I have to feel that his backup this year and A.J. Ellis is going to be a big help too. Yeah, and I think that's a, the encouraging part. You bring in a veteran on a minor league deal, so he still has to make that club. But he has learned from a lot of very talented catchers moving up the chain with the Los Angeles Dodgers. He had Brad Osmus there. That's going to encourage Austin Hedges for that communication part. A.J. Ellis is a great ad for this staff. Foul back above us. 
And back into the seats again. Hangs here at two and two to Austin Hedges. We're pretty safe up here, aren't we? I think so. Because we're behind the screen. As long as I mean, I think if it does get back here, it's not going to be hot. <laughs> I always have to watch my chiclets. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it does come in hot. On the ground, it's Seager again at third base. We'll take care of business, and the Padres are retired in the second inning. Inning and a half done. Seattle on top, two to nothing from Peoria. Have a 2 nothing advantage. Back with you tomorrow here. More spring training baseball. The National League champion Dodgers will be here to take on the Padres at noon again tomorrow. So be sure and join us right here on Fox Sports San Diego. Clay Richard back out there and Mike Zanino, the catcher for the Mariners, leading it off here in the bottom of the second inning. Zanino, Ford, and Andrioli scheduled to bat in the inning. We'll see if Richard gets through the second inning here, whether the pitch count will mount here in the inning. And especially first time out in spring training, we've seen a lot of the starters go just the one inning. Yeah, and you think about how they're going to extend it. And Clayton Richard had that extended first inning, which really comes into play. How many pitches he's going to throw. This one out to the backhand of Perella. One of the first out of the second inning. So one down and Mike Ford coming up. Always a good sign. You see Clayton Richard get those ground balls, inducing them. And of course, it was a double play that got him out of the first inning. Yeah, and you're probably going to see him be a little more aggressive in this second inning because of that extended first. And we're seeing a little bit of a cutting action on that first pitch to Zanino. Easy for me to say. And then the ground ball to second base on the next pitch. You have to be able to pitch in and out with that fastball command. It's going to be important for the left-hander. Twenty home runs last year between Double A and Triple A for Mike Ford. And a foul off the top of the Padres dugout on the first base side. One two. And that's too far inside. Clint trying to get comfortable today in his first start of the spring.
Strike three. And there's a second strikeout for Clayton Richard today. Two down. And the first one was looking of Nelson Cruz. And Ford goes here on the second inning for the second out. Yeah, I think you evaluate how Clayton Richards sets up certain pitches. There's not many times he wants the strikeout, but when he gets an opportunity for that, the put away pitch, you see him coming in to the left here. Looks like an off speed pitch. John Andreoli, right fielder now for the Mariners. Defensively, Manuel Margot well over into right center field. Andreoli to go the other way. Working him away there for a strike. Let's see where Margot is. Lots of room out there in left center. Big outfields here in Arizona. So you're going to have to handle a lot of real estate. Chopped up the middle. Perella ranging around the bag. It's second. His throw is good and a good stretch by Hosmer at first base. And a 1-2-3 second inning for Clayton Richard. Through two. Mariners have a 2-0 lead. Kevin Towers, what a great opportunity for the community of baseball to come out and tell stories about Kevin Towers, the former GM for the San Diego Padres. He was in five different organizations, and what a great man. And Mark Grant and I had the ability to be honored to ask to be able to host that event, and what a great showing it was. I was amazed by the number of people from Major League Baseball who came and uh, some very big names who were affected by Kevin Towers and the life of who wanted to pay their respects. I thought that was incredible. Over 20 speakers and all of the stories really central centralized into what Kevin Towers meant to them. But it was always the qualities and loyalty really came out. But Kelly Towers it was unbelievable opportunity for everybody to come in and pay tribute to what Kevin Towers did for them individually in the game of baseball. What a remarkable man. And he changed a lot of our lives, even including the players. And you don't necessarily see, hear that when you're talking about a former GM. Paul Jockerty was there, of course, Theo Epstein, Brian Cashman, on and on. It was an amazing list. Larry Lacchino, who yes. was the team president and CEO for many years, he's the one that took the chance on Kevin Towers at 33 years old. And Franchi Cordero striking out on a pitch in the dirt and got to throw him out in due. Well, looking back on the life of Kevin Towers, what impact did he make on you personally? Well, I, I, I said it yesterday in, in, in doing interviews um, about Kevin Towers. I was the 24th, 25th guy on the roster. He treated me like I was a star. He treated everyone the same way. And obviously, there's a totem pole effect when you're, you're starting to realize that's what your responsibility was. But for Kevin, 
he had a personal touch to that position, which I thought was remarkable of how he could separate what his job was to coming out there and treating everyone with respect, had huge respect throughout the game. And as you said, Brian Cashman, Walt Jockety, Theo Epstein, who was a former GM, now the president of the Cubs, the influence he had on their lives, but also the, f the impact that general managers have. It's a fraternity. It's a brotherhood, and that's what really came out on Sunday. And as you mentioned, the players, a lot of times the general managers, they have to make tough decisions and move on from some players and retire some players before they're ready to be retired and to have that many still want to pay their respects and love the man. Uh, it says a lot. Yeah, I know. All the friendships. Uh, Fred Yulman Jr., who was the assistant GM here for the Padres, still over 30 years in baseball, but a lot of that in the Padres organization his speech was really it was poignant and, and the friendship really spoke volumes throughout everybody's speech it was a remar remarkable day and i think a lot of people felt like it was needed very tough off season here for the padres family rob Pichlo, of course passing away and dick enberg uh, our friend who will be saluted and a day of honor for him coming up on March the 10th, a day of remembrance for Dick Enberg at Petco Park coming up. Yeah, it really was a, a tough offseason for a lot of us for obvious reasons. A swing and a miss here for Manuel Margot. He strikes out to end the inning. Former Padre Mark Zepchinski having a 1 2 3 third inning. Mariners have a 2 0 lead. As we head to the bottom of the third inning, I'm joined now by Clayton Richard. Clayton, congratulations on getting that first one under the belt. How'd you feel out there today? <laughs> Thanks. Felt good. Um, every time the first spring outing comes around, you don't really know how you're going to feel until you take the mound. So got got my work in, uh, gave up a couple runs, but overall felt good about about it. Now, as Don and Mark were talking about up in the booth earlier, normally for a veteran pitcher, you're not that worried about the results. You're coming in here with an agenda, a game plan of some things that you want to work on. What were you working on today, and did you accomplish that? For the most part, I think the, the first two hitters exposed what I was trying to do. I, I made a couple mistakes to those guys. I was trying to get glove side with my fastball. Um, lost a couple over the plate. One was to D that ran back middle down, got a base hit to the right side. And then um, to Segura, left one middle up, and he got a hold of it. So that was what I was working on and, and didn't execute a couple times, and it cost. Well, it, you started executing it afterwards, though, with a couple of strikeouts and the usual ground balls that we get the chance to see out of you, Clayton. Clayton, last year, an outstanding season for you. 32 games started, 197 innings pitched. You had the most strikeouts per nine innings that you've had in the history of your career. I know you're a team guy, but at the end of the season, did you have a moment to sort of look back and reflect and, and really appreciate what you accomplished for yourself last year? I, I, I didn't really spend much time about what I accomplished more so what I needed to get better. Um, I feel like 
at the end of my career, I'll have time to look back on all the seasons and see what I did well. But for me, I think there was just enough room for improvement that 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 uh, consumed my mind. And going back, watching all the games, seeing what I can improve on and bring to help this team get better this year. You know, last year, I don't know if it was by design or whether you just found yourself in that role, but you really became a, a veteran leader in that clubhouse. Uh, it, to the point where you actually had some guys come in and spend some time with you during the offseason, if I'm not mistaken, Laura and Lucchese. Talk a little bit about that and uh, the, sort of that, that veteran presence you want to carry into this year as well. It's it's something where I, I'm just going to be myself. I'm not going to press hard to to lead anybody, but um, I'm going to try to lead by example and, and do what I do to take care of business and get prepared for games. And I think people see value in that. Uh, your teammates understand what it takes to get ready for games. and. I think the organization does as well, and that's why I sent the guys out to Indiana, because I know, I know it wasn't for the weather. <laughs> now, as far as having Eric Hosmer on board, is, is it a little bit helpful in terms of having some more veteran presence out there to help you out with that? Of course. Anytime you can get someone that's been through it and done it, it's of real value. And um, we, we've added a few guys that ha have been through that, through, through the process, through winning teams, through winning championships, and it's going to be a huge huge advantage for us to have those guys in the clubhouse and the dugout and playing out on the field. And you mentioned playing on the field along with that presence in the clubhouse. Doesn't hurt to have some solid defense behind you, especially as a ground ball specialist. Your thoughts on having Gold Glover at uh, first base and uh, Freddie Galvis over at short now? That's terrific. Tr extremely excited about our, our infield, our alpha. I mean, everything we got going on right now defensively is, is something to smile about. So um, those guys work tr tremendously hard at their craft and they're prepared every day to play on both sides of the ball, so we're excited about that. And as far as this organization, obviously a lot of young players. Is it turning the corner, though, with some of these additions and what you guys are trying to accomplish this year? Yes. Um, it, it, it's, I, I think, from the top down, I mean, front office down, we, we, they've set a precedence that we're going after it. It's not wait till next year, wait till 2020 or anything like that. It's, it's we're going to go go after it this year. We're going to do everything we can to win baseball games once the season starts and put ourselves in in position to play in October. Clay, glad you got your work in today. Thanks for the time. Thank you. All right, Clayton Richard getting it done today, guys. Back up to you. All right, Scan, thanks very much. Yeah, very interesting how the veterans go about spring training and trying some different things here. This is the place to do it, I guess. Yeah, there's so many things that Clayton Richard does that he, he's such a professional. And why I say that is that you heard Bob talk about the, the importance of bringing in young left-handers, being that, that veteran presence, but him being himself. I mean, that's what he's used to. So he, he's not going out of his way to try to be that leader. He just has those leadership qualities. And really, you can go back to University of Michigan when he was a quarterback. And I think that is something that when you come down to spring training, people don't realize you have an opportunity to take guys out to go to dinner, to have those, those communications that are very important moving forward because it all has to do with relationships and relationship building. But you need veteran pitchers that are able to not only do their job, but go out there and have those conversations that these young players need. Bring them to Indiana. The Bruce Spencer's winners. And uh, you're not going there for the weather is right because <laughs> it was freezing in the Midwest. <laughs> They'll run in here for the Mariners in the third inning. The new Padres pitcher Eric Lauer took over for Clayton Richard and has been touched for a run so far here in the third. And a big cut by Robinson Cano. Has him down here one and two. Well, they're excited about this young left-hander. You can see that conventional delivery. Good body type. See the numbers for Eric. You see the walks and the strikeouts. That is what you see really across the board when you're talking about these prospects coming up for the Padres. First round pick, 25th overall in 2016. Spent time last year between single A and double A, Lake Elsinore and San Antonio. And these type of appearances are very important, not just spring training appearances like Clayton Richards just working on stuff. This is a chance to pitch in front of the major league manager here during spring training. Yeah, and don't minimize the, the anxiety that some of these young pitchers are going to have. They might not look nervous, but inside them, they really are. You're going to see some fastball command, and I think a lot of these left-handers that you're seeing that are prospects for the Padres, they're not afraid to pitch in. And that's a common theme. He has the ability to pitch with his fastball in. And maybe he's setting it up with that slider down and away. Let's see if he goes in here with the fastball. And he's facing a Robinson Cano, not a guy that he's seen in Lake Elsinore or San Antonio exactly. recently. He 
Cano reaches out, pops it up into short left field. Cordero coming in. Franchi cannot make the catch. Went to the backhand into foul ground and man, lost it in the sun. Yeah, he saw him look up, and yes, that sun is going to affect certain areas. What really difficult down here in Arizona, you're going to hear about a high sky. And you see Cordero really going after that ball. He took his eye off it to look at the infielder, see where Freddie Galvis was, the awareness of that. When you take your eye off the baseball down here in Arizona, it'll be very difficult. Not much in the way of cloud cover above. Not a cloud in the sky here. Some clouds behind us, though, I see now. There's none in front of us, but uh, some behind us. A lot of beautiful days. Came to Arizona last week, and it was the coldest I've ever, ever. been down <laughs> in Arizona. <laughs> Fouled off the left out of play. I don't know if that was a product because we're down here earlier than we normally are, but you have those, those days that really... It, you may get some rain early in spring training, then it becomes beautiful. Once it starts getting into the 80s, there's, there's no better place for spring training. But it was very cold, and I did a really bad packing job. You're not expecting that. Not good at all. Now Cano bats with Segura at second base. Ah! Segura has driven in. All three runs as Cano strikes out. First K here for Lauer. Now the young left-hander has to feel good about this. You talked about facing Robinson Cano. I think Austin Hedges bought that strike, sticking it on the bottom part of the strike zone. We talked a lot about that last year. Hedges framing pitches, making them look better than perhaps they are. Certainly an art. It really is. And uh, Yadier Molina comes to mind, but Austin Hedges is starting to develop that reputation as a young catcher around the league. Not two down for Nelson Cruz. Doesn't get any easier here. And a grounder towards short. Freddie Galvis will play the hop. And the throw to first ends the inning. Another run for the Mariners in the bottom of the third. We played three. It's 3 nothing Seattle. to nothing and plan your trip to spring training in Peoria now to see your 2018 Padres this year celebrates the team's 25th year in Peoria Arizona grab tickets today at Padres.com slash spring training great day to be on the berm here at Peoria Stadium as the Padres and Mariners going head to head today we'll share this facility two three and four coming up for San Diego here in the fourth inning Freddie Galvis going to lead it off against a new Mariners pitcher Christian Bergman now into the game for Seattle their third pitcher of the day and a look at his numbers from a year ago takes over from Mark Zepchinski who left the game after a one two three oh. second inning the 
Former Padre registering two strikeouts while he was out there. Well, for the Padres and the Padre fans, now you're seeing Freddie Galvis. The first at bat was against Paxson, right-handed. Now he's the switch hitter. He can move over to the left side. Just another element that gives you more balance for the Padres offense. Say Ramirez two years ago, last year Eric Ibar, and this year now at shortstop Freddie Galvis. Yeah, and he's in his free agent year, so typically you'll get guys that'll want to press for that contract. But I think this is a guy that the Padres would really like to possibly sign long term. And there's no guarantee when it comes down to it. You know, you always talk about who's coming up, who's next, especially with the development of these Padres. A lot of talk about Fernando Tatis Jr., who we saw hit a home run here in the first game of the Cactus League schedule for the Padres. It's interesting because a lot of people are, he's the, he's the flavor of this spring training, the, the top prospect that's coming in this organization, very talented and a big body. And why I say that is that from the shortstop position, you're starting to see those guys, the Seegers of the Los Angeles Dodgers, Manny Machado is going from third base to shortstop this year. Going back that, to the big shortstop, that the Cal position, Ripken. Yeah, the right? Cal Ripken here is your favorite player. So that's what is going to be interesting to see how he does that. Why I say this? Because there's also people that say, hey, you know what? He's, he kind of projects as that shortstop, but we wouldn't mind him throwing us to third. Why I say that? Andy Green might say, listen, if Freddie Galvis makes us a better defensive team, let's try to get that position solved because that's going to be the big thing moving forward, how they determine that. Galvis, first time up, had a double. So far, the only hit on the day for the Padres, being out hit by the Mariners 4-1 to one as they bat here in the fourth inning. Solidly hit and by the outstretched glove of Robinson Cano at second base, out to right field, and Freddy Galvis is two for two today. Well, the hitting coach, Matt Stairs, knows all about Freddie Galvis. He was with him in Philadelphia and today, you're seeing a bat from the right side with two strikes. Now the left side, another 3-2 count. And lining this one past Cano. Two productive at-bats by Galvis today. So lead runner on for the Padres, second time in the game. And here is Will Myers, who flied out to right field first time up. Now the willingness of Will Myers to move to the outfield very quickly said that during the offseason. If the Padres had a chance to get Eric Hosmer, he was on board. Yeah, very unselfish for Will Myers. And why I say that, signed a good contract for him. Sharply hit off the glove of Segura. It's short out to left center on a hot shot that exploded on these hard infields in Arizona. And that one kind of took off. Myers hit it sharply, and the Padres have two on with nobody out. Well, that had to feel good for Will Myers. Looked like a ball out over the plate. He drilled past that. Hot shot past Segura. But for Will being unselfish to move to the outfield because he embraced that challenge to be at first base. I think it fit his personality. He liked the action at first. But he realized getting his former teammate in the minor leagues, Eric Hosmer, it was going to be a better opportunity for him to be able to know that we the team is better with Eric Hosmer and him moving and shifting to the outfield. Here is Hosmer, his second at bat, came up in the first inning and lined out to shortstop and Gene Segura in the first. He was excited to get this first game underway after being idle the last couple of days here in spring training action. Easing his way into the game portion of spring training. Now, yeah, I became a huge fan of his because we were here and, and did the the first press conference that he had, he went through the ringer that day because it was all interviews, obviously. And I said to him, you're going to sleep really well tonight. <laughs> it took a few days, I am sure, because it was overwhelming. Obviously, his life completely changed, moving from a team to from the American League to the National League. Right side and through into right field, a base hit for Eric Hosmer. Freddie Galvez coming around is going to try and score. Throw goes to third, run in. And Eric Hosmer gets his first hit in the Padres uniform here during the spring and drives in his first run. Three to one, Mariners, as the Padres are on the board. Get the ball. 
<laughs> uh, this has to feel good for Haas. You can see him handling that fastball in on the hands. Right through the hole for that RBI single. So first and third to run in and three straight hits here for the Padres. Galvis, Myers, and Hosmer. And now Jose Perella coming up. Walked in the second inning. Only free pass served up today by Mariners pitching. Well, some of the challenges, Don, when you come into a spring training game from the hitter's perspective, is sometimes you'll say, hey, I want to take some pitches. I'm going to see as many as I can. Then you get thrown into an RBI situation, and we haven't seen Perella take off of that. So he's played winter ball, so he is locked in right now. So his approach in this RBI situation is totally different from, say, another guy that hasn't had many at-bats. You're going to see Perella take that aggressive approach that we've seen in this RBI situation here. So his timing may be a little bit better is what you're saying. Exactly right. Lines this towards left field. Ian Miller won't get it. It's by him to the track of the wall. Myers will score. Hosmer making his way to third base. It's an RBI double for Jose Perella, and it's a one-run game. Well, three to two now. Mariners on top, but the Padres with four straight hits have put together two quick runs. That was a hot shot on a line. A 1-1 one, one count. You can see him just sitting on this pitch. Comes in on his hands, and he pulls him in. Short to the baseball. In the RBI situation, that's what you fell in love with, and we saw a lot of that out of Perella last year. So second and third, and it's been a tough goal, but here for Christian Bergman coming into this game for the Mariners. And here is Hunter Renfro. All started with Freddie Galvis getting a single. Myers with a single. Then Hosmer with an RBI single. Followed by the RBI double by Jose Perella. 3-2, Mariners on top. Second and third, nobody out for San Diego. Did he go? They'll check. No, he did not. Renfro bounced into a 5-4-3 double play back in the second inning. That's in there for a strike, two and one. Renfro, who played in left field yesterday, is the DH today for the Padres. And of course, saw all of his time last year in the big leagues in right field. As I mentioned earlier, not easy going from right to left. No, it's not. And that's going to be the adjustment that Hunter Renfro is going to have to embrace and embrace very quickly. Because that's playing time out there. And this is the evaluation at bat of the day because of the struggles he had against right-handers. I think a lot of the struggles really came to staying within the strike zone, seeing a heavy dose of those sliders. And that's what you saw from Hunter Renfro last year. That reputation gets around the game very quickly. On the ground to third base. Seeger's coming home with it. And they've got Hosmer hung up. So he the plate in third, and they'll tag him out. No further advance for the base runners. Seeger elected to come home. Hosmer was breaking on contact. And ends up retired for the first out of the inning. Now you see the infield back and in Seeger, but the hot, hot shot to third base gave him an opportunity to throw home. Now with Hosmer, this isn't the rundown that you want to get in. They did go on contact, trying to steal a run. So first and second now with one out in the inning. And it'll bring up Austin Hedges. Second plate appearance of the day. Grounded out to third base in the second inning. 0 for 1. Pick up play at second and back safely is Perella. Well, Hosmer was trying to stay in a rundown long enough to perhaps get the runners to move up, but they could not, and Perella remained at second base. Yeah, those veteran guys, they don't like those rundowns. <laughs> they don't want to stay in <laughs> too long. No, it didn't last long. Yeah. You know. 
Are oh, those guys trying to make the club? You want to try to stay in as long as you can. <laughs> now Hedges bounced out to Kyle Seeger, third base in the second inning. Head in the count, 2-0. and oh. And a struggle in the inning for Christian Bergman. Third pitcher used today by Scott Service and the Mariners. After two shutout innings from the starter today, James Paxton and Mark Sepchinski win an inning. Fly ball struck to center field pretty well. D. Gordon going back onto the track at the wall. That ball is gone. A three-run home run for Austin Hedges, and the Padres are on top. Well, they trailed three to nothing coming into the inning. Now have a five to three lead, and a three-run shot for Austin Hedges. Well, back-to-back -back games for Austin Hedges. Two days ago against the Angels, he went opposite field. Now this one to center field, just left of the batter's eye. He has made some simple adjustments in the offseason, and he is seeing the benefits now. Well, 18 of them during the regular season last year for Austin Hedges, first home run of the spring. And a three-run shot. It's a five-run inning so far for the Padres. There's action out there for the Mariners. We'll get another look at this swing. Well, some of the simple adjustments, but to me, it looks like a shorter swing to the baseball, but also the impact. He's trying to simplify things, which that's what you do with more opportunities. And that initial feedback, especially in game situations, that just magnifies the adjustments you're making. Franchi Cordero getting his second plate appearance of the game, a strikeout victim first time up, and he's been one of the surprises so far this spring, opening some eyes here in the coaching staff on what he's been able to do and really running the bases very well so far. Did some really good things last year. Obviously, the strikeouts are what you have to minimize, but Frenchie went to... Down the left field line, that'll fall fair. Well, we're over to play it. Cordero thinking two, heads to second base, throw is offline, and the head first slide into second base safely. A double for Frenchie Cordero. Well, Don, he had a great winter ball season, the MVP in his league. And why I say that is that he gained confidence. And now you're starting to see him really show up after that productive offseason. And he can handle a breaking ball. I think a lot of the adjustments come from the fastball and him being able to handle that. But the speed element to his game is a big, huge guy. He has the ability to run those bases and impact games with his speed. Strike over the outside corner here to Dusty Coleman. Coleman got into 27 big league games last year with the Padres. His previous major league experience came with the Kansas City Royals. He's had a couple of starts at third base so far during the spring. Pops it up foul as Zanino, the catcher, coming back. May have a play. He does, and he makes it for the second out of the inning. So Coleman retired. And yeah, that'll bring up Manny Margot. So far, 0 for 2 from the top spot on the Padres order today. Margot flying out to right field in the first inning, struck out swinging in the third. Of all the outfield congestion, he appears to be a lock for center field. Yeah, and I can't blame the organization for just embracing what Manny Margot did last year. Had that DL stint, which I thought derailed his offensive abilities just a little bit. But defensively, he can impact a game. Off balance cut there. Has him down 0-2. I think a lot of the stages, and, it, and I think they've been... The fans don't realize what it really takes to get to that next level. And you're always trying to search it in your mind as a player. But Manny Margot has not reached that potential yet. Even though we've seen some flashes of very good style of player, I think he has some growing to do. And that's a good sign because I think this is an all-star caliber type of player. 
I just have the feel that he's going to get better and better mm -hmm. every year. Yeah, because you have to have that want. And I think Manny Margot has that drive every single day to get better. And we see it occasionally. When you're not expecting it out of Manny, he can impact a game. He hits a, a big double, maybe steal a base. He has a lot of qualities that you absolutely fall in love with. That's been quite an offensive inning for the Padres. They've sent eight men to the plate, and so far five have scored. Now, Franchi Cordero right now at second base with two down in the inning. And two and two here to Manny Margot. Ninth member of the Padres to bat here in the inning. And with Freddie Galvis to get the inning started with this single waiting on deck. fun playing the game too always a smile on his face there's a lot of fun to watch he's a, he's fun to to be a fan of and if you're watching a lot of Padre baseball you're gonna see this, this guy try to embrace all of the qualities that you want to be as a star player grounded back to the mound Bergman's got it he will flip underhanded to first and that will end the inning but quite an inning for the Padres they score five times including the three run home run by Austin Hedges out to left center field Padres now have a 5-3 lead after three and a half the Padres game with the Indians and we look forward to celebrating the life of the great Hall of Famer Dick Enberg. I'm looking forward to that obviously it impacted a lot of people not only in baseball but throughout sports a huge loss for a lot of us. No question he was incredibly nice to me and the year that uh, we had the chance to kind of split games in uh, 2000. 16 a wonderful man and certainly someone that we all looked up to in this business. Yeah, and I always say this too. I, I did a spring training game with him and never took things lightly even when it was a spring training game and tried to be professional about everything that he did. But then I went back and I was trying to sit there and think about how many dumb things I did on the broadcast <laughs> and I go back to the hotel and there he is on ESPN Classic talking it, it was the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cowboys <laughs> with Merlin Olsen <laughs> Merlin Olsen that really put things in perspective to right field Myers on the move and will will get there that was a good running catch out there by Will Myers getting acclimated to right field and a nice catch for the first out of the inning well we're going to start dipping into what Will Myers is doing you see him playing straight up but that initial step can be pretty important athletically Going to his right is going to be pretty important. That glove side going to the line is probably the easiest play he's going to have. But going across your body, 
That's what you're going to have to evaluate. Good job out there and right. This one popped up foul. Hedges headed over towards the dugout. He won't have a play. Let me ask you as a uh, former first baseman outfielder, how different is it when you're part of the game really at first base all the time to all of a sudden move to the outfield where sometimes not a lot happens for long periods of time. Yeah, I think the biggest challenge for me was the throwing aspect of it because at first base with it you know, being left-hander, you can shorten your throwing, but then going out and having to extend it a little bit. Will Myers has possesses a very good arm. We've seen it before. He's very accurate. We saw it in the game yesterday. He came in hard and prevented a run for scoring because he has that arm. But really, he, athletically, he's going to have to show that first step in the awareness of going pitch to pitch. It's sometimes you go to the outfield and you start wandering yeah, a little I'm wondering bit. about focus. I mean, I would imagine totally different. It's a difficult thing. And I'm not saying it's just about Will Myers. Mm -hmm. it, it, collectively, you have to go pitch by pitch. Awareness of where the center fielder is to your right. Now striking out looking is Zanino for the second out here of the fourth inning. Second K for Lauer since coming into this game. They've got Cano in the third, gets Zanino here in the fourth inning, and that'll bring up Mike Ford. And of course, Myers had been in the outfield. That's the way he came up, and initially with the Padres in the outfield. Yeah, and I think he's not going to feel too uncomfortable being out there, but when it comes down to what we said about Hunter Renfro being in left field, there's some adjustments. Will Myers who is a priority, in my opinion, gets the opportunity to say, Andy, I feel better in right. Well, that's what you do. You stick him in right field, and you wonder, that's where his position's going to be. So let the other guys adjust. Is that because he's been on the right side the last two years, perhaps? Yeah, it, it could be. You know, visually, you're seeing the, the, the ball come off the bat the same way. Really, it's the awareness as an outfielder to see the ball off the bat. So batting practice and reading balls off the bat is going to be a, a very important for Will moving forward. Skip Schumacher is going to have to help him in that situation, the new new outfield coach, in working drills around the wall, being able to feel comfortable playing balls off the wall. But they're so far away from the aspects of, of the division, going to different road, road places. That'll be attacked when you're in there. He needs the awareness of being able to be comfortable with that first step, going back, coming in on a ball. The line drives coming right at you the awareness of, of feeling comfortable about reading the ball off the bat. There's ball four. Down to first base goes Mike Ford. The first free pass served up by Eric Lauer today. And a two-out walk to Ford. John Andrioli coming up here for the M's, batting out of the eighth spot, their right fielder. There is action in the pen right now for the Padres. Looks like Lucchese is up in the pen right now. It is Joey Lucchese, a left-hander. Another great prospect for the Padres in the organization, and great chance to see him during the spring. Lauer about to throw his 30th pitch in relief of Clayton Richard, who started today. One run charge so far to Lauer after Richard allowed a two run home run to Gene Segura back in the first inning. As Austin Hedges headed out there, this would be a mound visit. Yeah, pretty interesting situation happened in yesterday's ball game that comes into the play. The new rule this year, six appearances where you can go out and you can talk to the pitcher but they're going to signify that but yesterday's game the umpire gets hit off the mask and typically the catcher would go out there and give a courtesy professional time. courtesy and that's going to come into play so you wonder how they're going to handle that scenario as a visit we had in the first game here on tuesday uh, Carlos Iswahe, after the play, walked the ball to the mound and flipped it mm -hmm. to the pitcher. And the first base umpire indicated to the home plate umpire, that's a visit. Yeah. And yeah. then there are just going to be some things that players have to be aware of. That normally what you would do now could cost you one of those six visits. Yeah, because when you get you start eliminating those visits, then if you get to that sixth one, you have to make a pitching change. So that's going to be the dynamic. Just trying to speed the game up. 
in trying to incorporate some of these rules, and I think a lot of them are going to be, have to be modified. A lot of the catchers don't like it, especially when you're switching up signs and having to do that in different instances. And this is the new Mound Visits rule. Mound Visits without a pitching change shall be limited to six per team per nine innings. For any extra innings played, each club shall be entitled to one additional non-pitching change Mound Visit per inning. And it goes on a pitch down low. It's a ball four and down to first base. Back-to-back -back walks here and Andrioli. Is headed down to first and headed to the mound here for a mound visit. Is Darren Balsley, the pitching coach? Well, Eric Lauer known for that command, and you're seeing him in his first appearance in a major league spring training game. Might be tiring, tiring a bit. And Darren Balsley, the pitching coach, goes out there, give him a little breather. What do you think of the new rule? I know that uh, there are a great many catchers who don't like it, but there's also a great many catchers who seemingly go out there nonstop during games, and it seemed like it's uh, getting a little more over the last couple of years. Yeah, I kind of wish that they, they monitored that and they had communication and constant communication that have that reputation as catchers that do do that. But I really think there's some gamemanship, too to it that I'm really going to miss. There's certain times that you know you're going to have to give a little bit of message to the, to the pitcher in certain situations that I think a meeting between the pitcher and catcher is definitely needed. So, I, you know, I, I, I temper my expectations on this new rule, but I also, I, I like the in-game strategy when it comes down to what they're going to try to do. Are they going to try to make a pitching change? Are they going to give a guy an opportunity to throw more pitches in the, in the bullpen? There's all kinds of dynamics to that rule that you're just wondering how it's going to play out. There's a liner the other way towards the gap in left center. That'll get down. Cut off by Margot, but Ford's coming around. He'll score for the Mariners. They get some two-out magic here. Back-to-back -back walks costly as Miller drives in a run for the Mariners, and it's now 5-4 to four Padres. Second hit for Miller, and he picks up an RBI. Now, nice line drive stroke to the opposite way. What I love about this play, yes, it's a good stroke, but watch Manny Margot, that opportunity to keep that runner and preventing him to go to third base just because of that first step. Now yeah, pitching change coming up here for Andy Green. He had Lucchese up, but it looks like it's going to be Robert Stock coming in here now for the Padres to try to finish off the inning. A run for the Mariners. It's 5-4 Padres. One eight two earned run average. D Gordon. That's here with runners at first and second. Lauer ran into some trouble after getting two quick outs, but back to back walks to Ford and Andrioli. And an RBI single by Ian Miller. That would prove to be the 
last batter that uh, Lauer would face. But he departs responsible for the two men on. Now Robert Stock also has that riding fastball. Loves his fastball. Has a good off-speed pitch, but they love to see him work on that arm speed, the, uh, the arm side fastball. Because the last time out, he was missing that arm side with a little bit more of a run. So I saw on that first pitch to Gordon. Padre signed him as a minor league free agent in November as the Galvez will shovel it to second base and there is Perella. The out that ends the inning. It's 5-4 Padres after four from Peoria. membership at Padres.com slash compadres. Just having a great time out there on the berm today on a beautiful day in Arizona. Uh, I got the popcorn, <laughs> snack pack, make sure you get a drink, oh, wash yeah. that popcorn down. The sippy cup is always <laughs> big. I don't miss those sippy cup days. I got to no. be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but that is so cute. Rocking the Padres gear. Now Padres have a 5-4 lead in the fifth inning we go. Michael Cobble now into the game here for the Mariners. And Freddy Galvis, who led it off in the fourth inning, got it all started. A five-run inning for San Diego. He leads it off here in the fifth inning. Two for two in the game. Galvis with a double in the first, a single in the fourth, and a run scored. The numbers for Koval a year ago. Well, what was impressive by Galvis his last at bat got behind in the count and started spoiling off pitches until he got to 3 2 and then slashed one past Robinson Cano from the left side. Two two strike hits today. That's a productive day in a spring training game. Well, Galvis, who spent the last six seasons in Philadelphia with the Phillies, a 12 home run season last year, driving in 61. Now, I think from the Padres fans perspective what you're getting from Fre Freddie Galvis early in the count you're going to see an aggressive style and he starts digging in when the count gets down to two strikes shortens up does the aspects that really is an on on base percentage guy pretty idea of the strike zone and uh, didn't think that last pitch was a strike well, I think Matt stairs the former Philadelphia Phillies hitting coach now the Padres it's a huge influence. I'm getting Freddie Galvis over here. Well, Galvis strikes out this time for the first out of the fifth inning. We have all the guys that he has a feel for coming into spring training, I imagine Galvis will be at the top of the list as far as that goes. Yeah, and he probably asks Freddie Galvis to send that message, too. I don't think it's going to come from Matt Stairs' mouth 
per se, but I think he's going to have an opportunity to send that message when you're working in the cages, which is essential down here in spring training. Seems that the new hitting coach uh, in tow, that perhaps the hitting philosophy has changed here a little bit as far as the way they will approach things, at least for some guys. Yeah, and that change is really simplifying. There's Matt. He has the ability to be very positive when it comes down to doing his job, but he'd like a simple approach. I said to him this morning, I said, hey, how about Austin Hedges going the opposite field the other day? He goes, you know what, Sweeney? I love the fact that his next at bat, he got deep in the count and took it. And he took a 3-2 pitch right out of the hands of the pitcher. That's what I want to see. And it's certain simple aspects that he's asking these guys to construct in a bat, to have a simple approach. But also, don't, don't miss the aggressiveness that you need to be able to show. Go out there and do your damage, because that's what Matt Stairs was as a player. Very professional at bat, but he didn't shy away from being aggressive in his own style. 19-year major league career. And late in his career, an incredible pinch hitter. You're looking for a home run late in the game, and uh, he had some dramatic ones. Yeah, I think uh, the, uh, the opportunity to, to experience that. He started as a DH in the American League, went to the National League, became a pinch hitter, but had a very good career, and he earned every bit of playing time that he had, but a great teammate. And that's the reason why he is really in the position he is now, trying to mold this roster in this offense to be that much better because I think he's going to be a difference maker. Went to the dark side for a couple seasons. He was doing pre and post uh, <laughs> analyst work and then uh, was the analyst uh, for games with the Philadelphia Phillies. This one down the right field line. Andrioli battling the sun. Will make the catch for the second out of the fifth inning. Did the broadcasting thing and now yeah. back in the dugout where I think he feels more comfortable. Well, I think he felt uncomfortable to put makeup on, which we all do. <laughs> <laughs> but Matt Stairs has the ability. He's just talking with him. And he's that guy, and I think you need this, especially from the hitting coach perspective. He loves talking about it. You're seeing him on the and during batting practice. He's not necessarily having a lot of conversations, but he loves his job. And that's the reason why I think he's going to be very successful. Sometimes you start thinking about it. it. It is a daunting task because there's scouting reports. There's ability to send a message, not only from the big league perspective, but throughout the minor leagues, what you're trying to expect when these guys come up to the big leagues. And I think Matt's going to be able to do that and send that message. Learning an entire organization here in spring training, a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And embracing it. He really, I think, is enjoying it. Johnny Washington, the first base yes. coach last year, is his assistant coach, and he's done that job before. He's been a hitting coach, and I think he's going to lean on Johnny Washington as well. Some changes. Skip Schumacher, now the first base coach, and handling the outfield defense. Osmer's third plate appearance of the day in his Padres debut in spring training. Outfield about straight away here in Hosmer. Of course, he sprays it all over the outfield, so see a lot of this. And I'm pretty much straight up out there. He has lined out to short today and single to drive in a run as he fouls it off to the left out of play. Well, I'm sure this is probably going to be his last at bat. Typically, you'd like to try to get two, maybe three at bats. And Andy is probably going to ask Eric after this at bat how you feel, maybe even discuss beforehand. But hopefully we can get him on some headsets after he's done with the his performance today. Swing and a miss, and Hosmer strikes out a 1-2-3 fifth inning for Koval. Halfway through, 5-4 Padres.
You know, just uh, getting back into it feels good. I uh, just want to see some pitches right now, get your timing back. Uh, but feel good so far. Uh, you know, I like where I'm at. Uh, everything's going according to schedule right now. Okay, we got to talk about the offseason changes. The first one, putting on 20 pounds of weight. Now, is that to have more power to last longer through the season, just to look better in your bathing suit? What's the what's behind it? All three of them. <laughs> no, it's, uh, you know, for me, I felt like uh, just adding that, that weight uh, will give me extra homers, uh, obviously give me more strength. And, uh, you know, I felt uh, that's not, not the only thing I did. You know, I worked uh, a lot on my uh, mental game and I feel like uh, honestly uh, that's what improved the most even though I put on 25 pounds I feel like my mind's better now so uh, going forward I'm, I'm very excited about the season to uh, to get going with that you know I don't want to go into details about what you guys worked on but just the, the self-awareness that you had of saying to yourself hey physically I've got what's going on right here but I want to take my game to the next level what was sort of was there one final impetus that got you to make that move um I think it was just a cumulative thing uh, of, of things that have happened. I um, mean, you know, I feel like for me, the uh, the physical tools have always been there. I just don't feel like I've uh, done a great job of handling failure. So I feel like for me, it was uh, one of those things that I, I needed to uh, to improve my game on, and uh, I felt like it was time to really go after that. So uh, I feel good with what I did so far. Um, and uh, you know, he's a guy I talked to throughout the season, so uh, he's going to be good for me. And uh, you know, like I said, just ready to, to to put that to the test. And you put it to the test on the golf course, I guess. Worked on your golf game this off season too. Yeah. I worked on my golf game and uh, got, got pretty good, then went out the, the first round here and got the shank. So uh, wasn't wasn't very happy about that. Didn't really go according to plan, but uh, no, I feel good with it. Hey, we've talked about uh, the defense, obviously, and the transition for you. What's what's the toughest part in terms of getting back on track? Is it going back on, on balls on, at the wall? And also, I'm curious about lengthening out your arm because uh, we got so used yeah. to seeing those fun throws from you from down under at first base. So wh which is the most challenging part for you at this point? Um, for me, it's just all the little small things. You know, the footwork on ground balls, you know, uh, getting back to the wall, uh, finding the wall, things like that, communicating. I think, uh, you know, as far as the fly balls, I won't have that much trouble with that. I think it's more the, the smaller things things that you know you go through like uh, the communication the wall you know little things like that and yeah the arm I've uh, had to figure out the arm again you know I uh, had one arm slot for two years and now I've had to uh, to stretch it back out but uh, it feels good right now I like where I'm at um, uh, I know it's going to come back and be where it needs to be you know you say you're more comfortable in right field a lot of times fans don't understand the difference between the ball coming off the bat right field left field left field a lot a lot different angles out there or just a comfort factor for you maybe you've been on the right side of the field for a while uh, yeah it's a little bit of both I feel like uh, you know the ball you know, slicing towards my glove in, in right field and slicing to my, my throwing hand in left. So uh, I'd rather have the ball coming back to my glove. Um, you know, I think that's really the big difference in right and left. Your thoughts on the advancements of this organization and just in terms of some of the players that they've brought in, just sort of getting to the next level in terms of what this, this team's trying to accomplish and bringing championship baseball to San Diego? Yeah, I think so. You know, obviously adding a guy like Hosmer, I think it's going to be great. You know, he's a guy that can lengthen the lineup. He's a guy that's going to make people uh, around him better. And I feel like uh, anytime you can add a player like that, you do it. And uh, I feel like, uh, you know, him here, he's going to make everybody around him, uh, including myself. So I was very excited to, uh, to get that guy here. Well, nice job today. Thanks for the time. I yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Well, Myers looking good out there, guys, making that adjustment to right field and getting himself a knock today. Back up to you. All right, Scan, thanks very much. Yeah, able to make a nice running catch out there in right field. Probably getting a little easier every day. His second day in a row back-to-back -back starts in right field for the Padres during the spring. Yeah, I think people realize that you know, watching Will Myers, he loves the game. He has a certain uh, boyish quality about him when he loves the game of baseball, going out there, taking ground balls at shortstop before batting practice. But I think he's going to embrace this challenge, probably take more time in, in, in really focusing on right field rather than moving around because there are going to be those challenges early in the year and also going to different stadiums. That comes into play. But athletically, he can handle all those challenges. Joey Lucchese in the game right now. Fourth round pick by the Padres in 2016, and he's dealing with Robinson Cano with one out and the base is empty. Casey, 24 years old, six foot five, 204 pounds. Well, they love this young man. Funky motion, you can see that delivery. And he can hide the baseball, so that velocity is in the low 90s, but it's going to get on you. He has an interesting changeup. Actually goes away from left-handers. Typically, they'll fade into left-handers, but he likes to throw that changeup off of that fastball, both in and away. A Padres minor league pitcher of the year after pitching a combined 11 and 7 record with a nifty 2.20 earned run average. Time in Lake Elsinore and in San Antonio last year. That's a day for Cano after his one out walk. Some of the regulars coming out of the game now for the Mariners.
Nelson Cruz for the third time today. Cruz has struck out looking and grounded out to shortstop. 0 for 2. DHing today for the M's. Pretty close look to their regular lineup today for Seattle. Well, Don, some of these young pitchers and these young potential stars, you're starting to see knock on the door. This spring training is very important because some of those guys, and a good handful of them, are here at big league camp. Their first impression, yes, that's important, but feeling comfortable, feeling the ability of taking that next step and possibly getting that first call to the big leagues. And start of the year last year at Lake Elsinore. Earned California League midseason All-Star honor before moving up to San Antonio. Go to first and back safely there with the tag applied by Alan Craig, who has taken over at first base now for the Padres. Former Cardinal and member of the Red Sox. He's not played in the big league since 2015, but Got a lot of playing time here so far during the spring for Andy Green. Really did a lot of damage in the St. Louis Cardinals uniform, and it was a surprise when they actually got rid of him because he was an RBI machine. Went through some injuries. I talked to Matt Stairs this morning about him. He said, what, what have you seen from Alan Craig? He said, you know what? He's really using his lower half very well. And when a hitting coach talks about that, it really is the base of your swing. And if you're able to do that, I think everyone, everything gets connected, both with your lower half and your upper body with the swing, and you're going to start getting that producing of the power. A pop up to short right, and Perella staggers but makes the catch out there, battling the sun. Two down on that fly ball to short right field. Two down. Well, Jose didn't look like he was comfortable going back on this. You see the backpedaling. That's a scary situation as an infielder. But once that finds your glove, you're like, oh, my goodness, that feels good. <laughs> so two down here in the fifth inning with Cano at first base and Kyle Seeger coming up. Seeger bounced into a double play in the first inning. That lined out sharply to right field in the fourth inning. That was a good running catch out there by Will Myers. Wind has shifted here a little bit, was out to straightaway center. Now from right to left across the outfield here at Peoria Sports Complex. Oh, check a little closer that time. Yeah, not a bad pickoff move, back-to-back -back moves. Now the wind has shifted here as the day has gone on. 5-4, Padres on top with the Mariners batting here. The home half of the fifth inning. Well, the clouds have started to make their way in here a little bit. A little easier for the outfielders when those clouds come in. They're expecting some precipitation here in the area later in the afternoon. I packed a raincoat. Sounds like your packing situation improved your second trip <laughs> here did. to Peoria I had the to first. I had to make the adjustments. <laughs> The great of it. ones adjust. <laughs> they do. But we have the game tomorrow against the Dodgers, and then also on Friday, we're going to have the broadcast. So I had to pack a little bit of, of clothing. I did pack a couple jackets just in case it gets a little chilly in the morning. How about you? I packed everything. This was uh, because I had got this got a report from everybody that was here already that it was freezing in Arizona. <laughs> so I have warm weather, I have cold weather, and then of course we finish up spring training in El Paso, which could be on the chilly side. So yeah, it was chilly the last time we we did that. What a beautiful ballpark that is. Franmil Reyes, the new right fielder, is there to make the catch. It ends the inning. Played five so far. It's five four Padres from Peoria.
Cosmer, who is kind enough to join us from the Padres dugout. Eric, how you doing? Doing well. Glad to finally get out here and, and get my hands dirty with the boys. I was going to say, it's been a couple of days since games have started, and you used your way in today. Had to feel pretty good. It did. It felt good to start getting in the action. And, uh, you know, it's been fun just getting out on the practice field with these guys, getting to interact, and uh, just being out there, basically. So today, to get in the game action, uh, you know, you can you can try and do whatever you want in the offseason to simulate game action, but, um, you know, you get the real looks out here. So I was glad to get out here and, and get game one out of the way. Eric, after the whirlwind tour last week, and and change of life situation you've been able to settle in and 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 go about your business in the locker room out on the fields how's that been for you it's been good it's been good it's been fun too i tell you what uh you know it's similar situations the way i came up in kansas city and uh to see all this this young talent around here but um you know not only the talent on the field these guys are great guys and uh you know they want to take their game to the next level so um it's it's a fun situation for me it really is to get in here and uh you know be one of the veteran presence and help these guys and uh you know see what what we can get out of them what was the offseason process like for you it had to be nerve-wracking really kind of figuring out where it is you're going to end up during the offseason yeah it was it was it was a long process that's for sure uh you know we um I was confident something would get done the whole offseason. I knew I'd end up somewhere. I was hoping that, but, uh, you know, around early February, things started to get a little shaky there. And, you know, when you see guys starting to report, it uh, makes you a little anxious to get out there and start getting to work. So, uh, you know, I was glad to get stuff done before the first day of practice, get out and, you know, get that full uh, full squad workout in. So that was nice to get that done before the first day. Eric, obviously, when you when you ask questions about yourself around the league, people that have been around you, it's, it's glowing uh, superlatives of, of you but what I thought you did a great job at you you sent you sent a message through the Kansas City newspapers of your appreciation for the organization and the fans tell us a little bit about that yeah I, uh, you know, I signed there when I was 18 years old and um, you know up until a couple weeks ago that was my home and that's where you know basically I grew up uh, you know a lot of people go off to college or do whatnot but uh, for me that was uh, you know basically how how I grew up and uh, you know I'm thankful for everything that organization did for me the you know the people they surrounded me around uh, you know not only baseball coaches but people off the field as well to you know just teach you how to go about things the right way so um, you know that was uh, just a farewell that uh, you know me myself my family and I wanted to just express to Kansas City and uh, you know at the same time it's uh, close of one chapter and, and we're excited to get this new one started in San Diego. Yeah, I was gonna ask you about the comfort level here so far coming here to Peoria in your first spring training with the Padres how has that gone here in the early going uh, it's been great I tell you what, what what's uh, it's really helped a lot uh, I had a chance over the offseason uh, to visit uh, Petco Park uh, you know get to meet with AJ get to get to meet with Andy a little bit so uh, honestly it kind of uh, gave me a heads up of what I was getting into when I was uh, coming here before the first workout and um, you know those guys have been great to work with uh, Andy especially uh, there's been a lot of good communication before uh, as far as me and him on uh, how the body feels and what I need to get ready and stuff so uh, everything's been been uh, as good as you can ask for from my end. And Petco's been a pretty good place for you in the past. It's had. I've had a lot of fun games there. I tell you what, <laughs> that uh, somehow ends up being the destination for me every time, and I got no problems with that. I love everything about it. <laughs> it's your new home now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I'm ready. Well, we thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we're really glad you're here. And welcome to the San Diego, and looking forward to watching you play every day. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Eric Hosmer joining us here today in his debut in a Padres uniform. As Rafi Lopez bats here with two down in the inning. Yeah, you can't minimize the, the your first thought as a player is I want to play, especially an everyday player, I want to play my whole career in one uniform. And that doesn't happen, but he has moved forward. And I, I love the fact that he thanked the fans, he thanked the organization, but he has separated it. And this is a guy that has the ability to impact a roster, and it's not necessarily the star qualities, it's about the total package. I'm excited he's in Padre uniform. Lopez hits one high and deep towards right center field, and that ball is going to carry out of here. A home run. Rafi Lopez, last major league experience with the Toronto Blue Jays. And comes in here to bat for Austin Hedges. It's a solo home run, and the Padres have a 6-4 lead. Well, struck pretty well out there to right center field. Gets out of here. Two-out home run. Well, got in a hitter's count and got to 3-2. And he absolutely pounds this fastball. Got some pop in his bat. He knew it was gone right off the bat. So two down, bases empty. And Franchi Cordero, his third plate appearance, grounds one softly to second base and is retired to end things here in the sixth inning.
Rafi Lopez is homered. Hosmer's day is over. And the Padres have a 6-4 lead. And I'm joined by Freddie Galvis. Freddie, thanks for joining us today. Congratulations. A nice day at the plate for you today. A double, a single. How are you feeling up there? Uh, good, man. Good so far. I just tried to put my work and uh, just tried to take some pitches and uh, take good at bat. And so far, so good. You got a double from the right side, a single from the left side. Is, is it more challenging as a switch hitter to try to get both sides going uh, heading into the season? Uh, yeah. I think you have to put uh, the double of the war, you know, try to try to get on time on both sides. But it's good. I get used to it. You know, speaking of getting used to it, are you getting used to being in a new organization? You've been with the Phillies for 10 years. You, you, you were there since you were 17 years old. How's that transition going for you so far? I mean, it's been good so far, man. Uh, I said before, I have a few friends here. I have uh, my hitting call from last year. And uh, everything is good, man. Uh, a lot of good teammates, you know, they made me they made me feel good, and uh, so far it's pretty good. You mentioned the fact that Matt Stairs is here with you. How much does that help in terms of having your hitting coach that knows you so well as you're transitioning over to another team? I think I think it's good, man. Uh, he's been watching this, uh, the last three or four years, and uh, that's pretty good. You can hear uh, we're going to be on the same page, you know, and uh, he knows me already, so I think for a hitter, that's, that's good. Now, as far as getting used to your infield mates, is it difficult? Does it take a little time to get used to the different second baseman and and get the timing down working with those guys on the double plays? No, I don't think so, man. I think uh, we have a pretty good player here, a pretty good uh, second baseman, too. And uh, just talk with those guys a little bit, you know. Talk with those guys, and uh, I think so far we'll be on the same page. Yeah, talk to us uh, a little bit about uh, you're wearing number 13. Obviously, there's such a great tradition of shortstops coming out of Venezuela. Omar Vizquel has been one of your heroes, Luis Aparicio. I, I enjoyed watching Dave Concepcion, Ozzy Guillen. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, sort of that, that that mentorship that those guys gave you in becoming a Venezuelan big league shortstop. Yeah, like you said before, uh, almost every good uh, shortstop from Venezuela used the number 13 before, you know, like a Concepcion, uh, Biscuit. And then I grew up watching Omar Biscuit, so he was my idol, you know. And uh, that's that's why I wear the, the number 13. And uh, I think it's, I feel pretty honored. I feel like I honor you used to use it. And uh, I think I'm going to still use it for the rest of my career. Freddie, we heard about your reputation of working with young players before you even got over to this organization, and it's held true. Every young guy that I've talked to in this clubhouse, they immediately, hey, Freddie Galvis has been the guy that's been talking to me. Who are some of your mentors as you were coming up that you've learned how to do that and be such a great uh, share of your knowledge with these young players? I think I have a few, man. Uh, at the point I get to the big leagues was uh, 2012. I have uh, a lot of good veteran guys around me, and they always talk to me, and they always still try to, to help me to, to get to the to the team and, and you know just to just to be a be a good teammate uh, I think Carlos Ruiz was one uh, Chase Otley Jimmy Rollins uh, Placido Polanco I don't know uh, Danny Vice 
Contreras, all those guys, man, was a big guys like Ryan Howard, uh, and they always they always try to try to to help me to to get my in my comfort zone in that team, you know. And was everything was about you talking, man. When you have the confidence, I think you have to you do you can do a lot of good things, and that's what I try to pass it to the young guys, you know, make those guys feel comfortable and. Uh, after that, I think they can do whatever they want, you know, in the field because when they have the confidence, they can do everything. Freddie, you're already having an impact on those young guys. Congratulations on a nice day today and look forward to talking to you more. All right. Thank you, man. All right. Freddie Galvez getting it done out there, guys. Great to have him here. And the pitchers are super happy to have him here because he's going to be picking that ball at shortstop. Guys, back up to you. Yeah, absolutely, Scan. Thanks very much. Great to hear from Freddie Galvez, who had a nice day today. Great to see him in a Padres uniform. And one of his good friends is Jose Perello, who made a tremendous play going to his right but you need those relationships and he's coming in from a new organization as Bob talked about spending that many years in one organization and coming over and embracing a role that you're just going to be a good teammate to shortstop and Javi Guerra is just into the game and he gets it to first base just in time to retire Andrioli and to end the inning a one two three inning we have played six it's six to four Padres Majority of the San Diego Padres may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Nicely done. First of the year. Yeah, we got to lock it in for that. How did it feel? It, it <laughs> felt a lot better than the other ones. <laughs> well, it's out of the seventh inning we go. Padres have a six to four lead. Minion back on the mound, the right hander. And Dusty Coleman getting his third plate appearance of the day. 0 for 2. He is grounded out and fouled out. Coleman bats now as Travis Jankowski is on deck. He had taken over in center field. Looks like he'll be batting next for the Padres here in the seventh inning. On the ground to short. Low throw, and it is dug out at first base. No, pulled him off the bag. Evan White comes off the bag at first, and reaching safely will be Coleman. It's a tough throw there from Donovan Walton, the new shortstop. Oh, you see the throw, and this went right into the dirt. The first baseman does all he can with that big glove trying to scoop it. And a tough throw to try to nab that one. Coleman reaching on the miscue by the shortstop and here is Travis Jankowski. Talked about 
the crowded outfield and he is part of that. Uh, we have not seen Matt Caesar, who has a bit of an oblique problem that has hampered him in spring training, although Andy Green said today that he is relatively close to returning. And Alex Dickerson has got an elbow situation that has popped up, not his back, that kept him out all of last season, but an elbow. Here's a throw down to second base, and the ball got away, and reaching its second is Dusty Coleman. You got to feel for Alex Dickerson again, trying to get back on track here and get on the field. So many frustrations, obviously, as you alluded to, it's about his back as we take a look at Dusty Coleman advancing to second base. But when you think of the injuries, it's an opportunity now where as you said, the crowded outfield, you're going to have limited opportunities to make an impact on trying to make this roster. With all being said, you almost assume that, that people are going to be healthy moving forward, and you have to find a way. So the importance of spring training for Travis Jankowski, get that opportunity. Your mindset has to be, I have to keep on grinding at bats and start believing in my process where I'm going to be ready for an opportunity, whether it's off the bench all three positions in the outfield, Travis is going to have to show that. Last year, played with a fractured foot. Actually played about eight games on that fractured foot and then ended up being shut down for a long time. Came back with El Paso and by year's end was back in the big leagues with the Padres. thought it was pretty important for him to make it back and, and to get over that mentality of that injury, which was very difficult. Speed is huge part of his game. So he has to get back to the ways, and as you see him drawing that walk there, this is the opportunity for him that he's going to have to showcase. 6-4 game. You might not think you're in that running, running mode, but it really doesn't come down to game management. It has to do with the individual, how you're going to impact the roster. Stolen bases being able to get those spot starts and be ready. So your work in the cages is going to be very important. Your mentality and what you're bringing. Absolutely love Travis Jankowski. And Dusty Coleman at second base. Jankowski at first. And here is Javi Guerra batting for the first time today. Took over at shortstop for Freddie Galvis an inning ago defensively. Bluff off the backside, but no throw for Heminian. Swats it foul off to the left out of play. Oh, Javi Guerra, as he came over from the Craig Kimbrell trade, it's that shortstop piece that I think a lot of people in the organization were very high on. We saw a little bit of him in spring training last year. It really comes down to how he's going to swing the bat, how he's going to impact that, because a very talented shortstop. Still only 22. From Panama. Fly ball to left field, struck pretty well towards the corner and the wall. It's going to be off the base of the wall. Heading for third base and getting there is Coleman. They had to wait and see whether or not that ball was going to be caught. So the base is now loaded. A very long single off the base of the wall in left field. Yeah, I think the wind had a lot to do with that. It was a nice swing by Guerra. You can see him backing it up just a little bit, going the other way with the pitch. But the left fielder misplaces because I think the wind affected that ball. It made it very difficult for Coleman on that read. Bases loaded for the Padres. Bases filled here with Padres. Nobody out in the seventh inning. And Fran Mill Reyes scheduled to bat here for San Diego. Took over in right field for Will Myers. Had a home run in yesterday's ball game. Fran Mill has a lot of power. Not a huge batting practice guy, but it has a different sound off his bat. Why I say that is sometimes you can get enamored by guys batting practice and how far they hit it. And they get in and they have holes in their swing. But they love this power from this big right-handed bat. Fouls it back above us and out of play. And watch my chiclets. That one was coming back a little hot. Mm hmm. Brandmill Reyes, 22 years old from the Dominican Republic. 
Signed as a non-drafted free agent by the Padres in 2011. And last year spent the entire year at double-A San Antonio where he had 258 and 25 home runs. In fact, he led the Padres minor leaguers in home runs. To shortstop, Walton will go to second for one on to first for two. A run will score as in the back door comes Dusty Coleman and the Padres take a 7-4 lead. Nice double play initiated by Walton at shortstop. Hard, uh, Walton had the error to, that led off the inning. This is a really nice play going to his right. Had to gather himself just a little bit when he made that play, but an accurate throw and a nice turn in the middle of the infield by the Mariners. Brings up Alan Craig, who will make his first plate appearance today. Craig took over defensively at first base for Eric Cosmer, made his Padres debut today. Craig's best years in the big leagues taking place in St. Louis. He has not appeared in a major league game since 2015. Spending each of the last two years at AAA of the Red Sox organization in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Out of the University of California, Berkeley. That's the Paw Sox. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> not Berkeley, but the Pawtucket Red Sox. The Paw Sox. Spent five seasons with the Paw Sox myself. <laughs> Did you ever have like a severe accent? I did as a youngster. You I did? I really did, yeah. Man, you, you just go we, back and it's instant. It's amazing. As soon as you, you get out in, in Boston Logan Airport, where my parents still live, and you hear it, it's just, it, it's so funny to hear. We back the car, over there. <laughs> you gotta go over there. <laughs> we lived on a farm and we had a barn. <laughs> <laughs> that must have yeah. been wicked awesome. It was. That's a strike. Craig gets the bad news. But it wasn't until I went to high school in Palos Furries that I lost it. Yeah. And that's what really did it because I had it strong. I got rid of it in a hurry. Popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> Soda. <laughs> Payoff pitch coming here to Craig. And that's ball four. He's been doing a lot of this during the spring so far, walking a lot, very yeah. selective. And he has the awareness of the strike zone that I think is very encouraging moving forward. I wouldn't be surprised if he's one of those guys in camp that we start talking about. Health is a huge thing for him. But making an impact and being able to back up on Eric Cosmer, he's going to get some good playing time. First and third, two down, man. At least Urias. Makes his first appearance here and bats for Jose Perella. Well, you talk about knocking on the door. Luis Urias has really made an impact. Last year he was in camp, but he was on Team Mexico in the World Baseball Classic. So you didn't get to see him a lot. Did a very good job with them, but this is a young man that can handle the bat. He is 20 years of age. Snapped over to first base and just back safely at first is Craig. Pretty good bid right there. Almost got him. I see Alan Craig getting off and being aggressive out there, going to the back part of the base. Ooh, he was on the move. That was more than your average secondary lead. Popped up foul off to the right out of play, and Urias finds himself down one and two. Well, early in this count, Urias is really, early in this camp, I should say, he has shown the ability to go the opposite field and with power. Line drive stroke, but has that power in the bat. I don't think necessarily he's a home run hitter, but you're talking about bat to ball skills. He was the youngest player last year in the Texas League. He was 19. San Antonio played 118 games, hit just shy of 300 a year ago at 296. Signed as an international free agent by the Padres in 2013. So second and third now after the steal. 
foul off to the right out of play. have added a run here as they continue to bat in their half of the seventh inning on top seven to four. Slap foul down the right field line out of play. What has been a beautiful afternoon so far here in Peoria at Peoria Sports Complex shared by the Padres and Mariners and today they go head to head. Padres are the road team today. Back with you tomorrow on Fox Sports San Diego, the Padres and Dodgers. Noon start time. Well, of course, the regular season will have four extra off days now for the players, as it turns out during the course of the season. That's largely the reason for the earlier start time of games. Yeah, I like that. And I think you're trying to try to accommodate some of the northern teams that go through those weather issues but also try to build in some of those off days I think it's essential I don't think people realize the severity of what the schedule brings for the 162 games that's a third walk of the inning given up by Jimenez and that's going to do it it appears three walks in the inning had a double play mixed in there run scored well, Matt Steers has to be very happy with the approaches of these Padre hitters. Pitching change will step aside with the Padres on top 7-4. to four. Everything you thought you knew about medicine is wrong. And new for the 2018 season at Petco Park, Terrace VIP boxes are the newest luxury seating option. Relax in your private space in fully cushioned seats. I love cushioned seats. <laughs> and don't miss a minute of the action with in-seat service located behind the home plate. These are available for nightly rentals or for season ticket membership. More information at Padres.com slash premium. A oh, beautiful day and no cushion seats there. Just I the love rash of the seats. berm. <laughs> but that feels good. Very comfortable. It is. Stretch out. Relax. Now the Mariners bring in a left hander here with bases filled with Padres and Webster Rivas making his debut here. Rivas batting for the first time but the base is loaded here. Two down in the inning. Padres do have a run so far in the top half of the seventh and enjoy a 7 to 4 lead. 30th pitch of the inning will miss outside.
Torres coming over from the minor league camp as this one is fouled back to the screen. Rivas making his first appearance of the spring here in a major league game. Rafi Lopez on deck right now for the Padres who homered his last time up after coming into the game and taking over defensively catching. Three and one. Now the count to Rivas. There is Rafi Lopez. His home run. Part of a seven run attack right now for the Padres. Last year between Lake Elsinore and San Antonio. Full count now. Rebus from the Dominican Republic. Started his career in the Dodgers organization. He was 27 years old. Swing and a foul tip held on to for strike three that will end the inning. Padres leave him loaded, but they do grab a run on top seven of four, seventh inning stretch from Peoria. Run home run back in the fourth inning. 18 of them last year, first of the spring this year, and a blast. Part of a five run attack for the Padres in the fourth inning, who now lead it seven to four. And speaking of people joining us, Austin Hedges joins us from the dugout. It was a play of the game. Austin, how you feeling? Feeling good. Got to put a good swing on that ball. Very nice. At first, it's actually the second. I got to call you out on that one. Yeah. Oh, sorry about yeah. that. I didn't know that. I didn't see the first one. <laughs> yeah. And the first one was Oppo Taco against the Angels. <laughs> nice. You've made some adjustments with your swing. I don't want you to go over the adjustments, but obviously instant feedback has to feel good for you. Yeah, absolutely. Did a lot of good work uh, in the offseason and been working hard this spring training. And, you know, really the last, last couple of days kind of fine-tuned it to kind of apply it into the game because obviously uh, game speeds up a little bit over you know just BP all offseason so um, pleased with the adjustment and obviously having some results off of it's really nice how much more confident do you feel or more comfortable coming in this spring training than perhaps you did last year with a year under your belt yeah absolutely I think um, just knowing how to prepare to, to play a full season a lot of things I learned last year was just you know all about that preparation so um, going about my day uh, each and every day just you know, obviously wanted to get better here, but really preparing for when it matters this season. Austin, when you go through the grind that you did last year, and obviously mentally it's more grinding, but physically, speak to that and what you had to do this year in your off-season program to play more games and be able to be out there more for your pitching staff. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a that's one of my main goals this season is to go out there and you know try and play every day. I um, mean, you know, all the best catchers in the league are catching 130, 140 games, and I want to be that guy. So, uh, getting with Brett McCabe, our strength coach, he does an outstanding job. And uh, for me, it's all about my legs. If my legs are strong, everything else follows. So, really, really crushed on the legs this year. What's it been like to have a veteran backup catcher like AJ Ellis around here in the spring with you? I mean, just uh, just being with him for the last couple of weeks. Um, He's already taught me a lot, just talking game plan, um, how he works with pitchers, um, how he keeps guys under control. Uh, he does an outstanding job, and there's a reason he's been in the game so long, and uh, I'm looking forward to working with him more. I think, obviously, you, you see the development. Now you're starting to see some of these uh, pitchers, like Joe Lil Casey we saw today, Eric Lauer, some of these younger pitchers. How excited are you from the direction of this organization? Oh, it's awesome. Uh, so many young, awesome arms. Uh, guys like Lauer and Lucchese, like you said, uh, did, did an outstanding job today. Um, just catching their bullpens and uh, getting out there in the game today. Um, I'm really looking forward to working with them in the big league soon. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, you get a chance during spring training to really catch everybody, I would guess, and, and get a feel for what their strengths and weaknesses are so that when they do arrive, you know a little bit about them. Yeah, uh, I got the um, luxury of catching a few guys this offseason a little bit to get to know them a little bit, and uh, I think that's been helping a lot so far this spring. Um, you know, any chance I can to work with him now, it's only going to help us in the future uh, when I catch him in the big leagues. Edgy, talking to, to, you know, about the fans and the awareness of how important spring training is, obviously at the field, but even off the field, are you taking the more of a, a leadership role when it comes down to that? Yeah, it's definitely something to take a lot of pride in. Um, you know, everybody's looking at the catcher every single pitch. So, um, you know, whether you like it or not, guys are looking to you. And uh, if they feel like they got a guy they can respect uh, to lead them out there, not just the pitching staff, but the rest of the team, uh, you know, someone they can trust back there, that's the guy I want to be. So definitely take a lot of pride in that. Seems like you're kind of an extension of the coaching staff, if you will, at least the pitching staff for sure. Yeah, at least the pitching staff. You know, obviously we have a great guy in Darren Bosley uh, leading our pitching staff. But uh, the more I can work with him, um, you know, talking about game plan, just working with our guys, getting on the same page. Um, you know, it's going to help us out this year. Well, Austin, great to talk with you. Glad you're back and healthy and uh, look forward to watching you this season. Thanks for joining us. All right. Thanks, guys. Austin Hedges, who has two spring training home yeah. runs. <laughs> I, I boxed that. I didn't see it. Was it yesterday? Was it, it against the Angels? It was against the Angels two uh -huh. days ago. Two days ago. But you think about what Austin's doing, and I think he probably takes it a little bit to heart that so many people talk about his catching ability and then handling his staff. You need the total package, and he wants to be the total package. And he's made some nice adjustments that have given us some nice instant feedback down here in spring training early, which I think is important. He knows it's still a process. He needs consistency. But he also touched on trying to be that guy that catches 130, 140 games. That is a daunting task to ask at a taxing position. Yeah, a very good year last year, trying to follow it up and continue his maturation period in the big leagues. And fun to watch, for sure. Talk about his ability to frame pitches as well. So good at it. And this is to left. And Shane Peterson just into the game out there makes the catch. That will end the seventh inning. We head for the eighth. San Diego on top of Seattle. Seven to four from Peoria.
And therefore, strike one to Rafi Lopez, who leads it off here in the eighth inning. Lopez with a home run. Lopez played 24 games last year for the Toronto Blue Jays. Born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Still resides in Pennsylvania and in Philadelphia during the offseason. Last year saw time double A, triple A, and in the majors with the Toronto Blue Jays. Four home runs with the Jays last year. Oh, he had a really good productive second half for the Toronto Blue Jays. Ask Justin Hatcher, one of the coaches on the staff, that really handles the catching position. He said, I really like his skills behind the plate. Has a very good throwing arm. The right field struck pretty well, and that's going to head to the wall on a hop as Lopez will stumble around first base, but he will get the second sliding with a double. Well, a home run in his first plate appearance. Now a double here in the eighth inning for Rafi Lopez. Well, it has to feel really good, especially after his last at bat, which was the home run. And left on left. See him hanging in there, being able to stroke that line drive off the wall and right. So Lopez at second base, and it brings up Shane Peterson batting for the first time today. Took over in left field for Franchi Cordero. A 253 average last year with the Tampa Bay Rays. Two homers and 11 runs batted in. <laughs> on the ground, right side. Ranging is helmet at second base. On to first for the out as Lopez takes third. Productive out on the ground ball to the right side. So nicely done to get that runner along to get Lopez to third. Yeah, I love those unselfish at bats. Sometimes they go unnoticed if you're just casually watching a game, but I think coaching staff absolutely love seeing that. Luis Almanzar now pinch hitting here for Dusty Coleman in the eighth inning with the infield in all the way around. And ball knocked down, doesn't get too far away for Lopez to try plate work. Lisa Almanzar from Santo Domingo of the Dominican Republic, signed as international free agent in 2016. Lisa Almanzar, just 18 years of age. In the air to center field. Plenty deep enough as the catch made out there for Lopez to tag and score the eighth Padres run of the day. Padres on top eight to four. Sack fly for Almanzar. Nicely done. So another run for the Padres on top eight to four now as they continue to bat in the eighth with the bases empty and two down. And it brings up Travis Jankowski. You know, the foot injury last year, you take the speed factor out of Jankowski's game, and that really hurts. Yeah, and I asked a, a few people around the organization, how's he running, how's he look, and he said he looks fully healthy. I, mean, I think that's the determination of how he can still utilize his speed. But he's made some nice adjustments with his leg kick, modified that a little bit, which definitely shows. Always putting in the hard work in the offseason. Fly ball struck pretty well to right field and back onto the warning track to make the catch. That ends the inning. A good ride there for Jankowski, but he's out number three. Padres had a run, take an 8-4 lead.
Padres offer a series of week-long summer baseball camps open to boys and girls ages 5 through 12. Campers get exceptional instruction along with a unique Major League experience. Campers, camp is offered in seven locations throughout San Diego in June through August. Learn more or register your future Padre at Padres.com slash camps. Well, Brad Kennedy back on the mound here for the Padres dealing with Johnny Adams who took over at second base for Robinson Cano. That's here to lead it off in the bottom of the eighth inning. And that's in there for a strike for Kennedy. Second inning of relief here for Kennedy. Join a one, two, three, seventh inning. 23-year-old resides in San Diego during the offseason from Pomona, New Jersey. And 11th round selection back in 2015. Softly grounded left side to short as Guerra races in and makes a good hard throw to first base to retire Adams. First out of the eighth. Had to charge that and didn't very nicely. Yeah, slow developing play for Javi Guerra. Really showing that arm strength on that play. So one out and it'll bring up Joe DiCarlo who bats for the first time today takes over for Nelson Cruz as the DH. Oh, it got spiked about uh, well not quite halfway to the plate but well in front of the dish. Well talking to pitching coach Darren Balsley about Brett Kennedy he says he loves his fastball both two seam and four seam and he's very aggressive throws most fastballs in the organization. He'd like to see him refine his off-speed pitches. Got a start here the other day. He's out of Fordham University. And last year, 13 wins in double-A San Antonio. 13 and 7 with a 3.70 ERA. 26 starts in the rotation all year. 11th round pick by the Padres in 2015. Retired four in a row, but has fallen behind here to Carlo, 3-0. And there's a strike when he needed it, 3-1. and one. He was a Texas League postseason all-star, Brett Kennedy, last year. 23 years old. And he battles back nicely here to make it a full count. Well, you're starting to see that minor league system stack up at that double A level You're going to see some guys in triple A level which Rod Barajas is the manager again there in El Paso He's done a very good job there over the last couple years he sure has the talent is coming these guys are developing really starting from spring training now that you get that opportunity at the end of the year they start evaluating it. they take some initial steps of what you're going to try to work on in the offseason and now it's about how you can jump. So there's guys that are being forced to different levels, not necessarily one step every year. You're seeing some of these guys pushed to even skipping levels. Line and in the right field for a base hit. Well, the reach of Urias at second base. And DiCarlo has a one-out single to right field. First base runner to reach against Brett Kennedy. And he's inning in a third of work so far. Seth Mejia's Breen coming up here now for the Mariners. And of course the Padres will go to El Paso. The last exhibition game of spring training to play against the Chihuahuas in El Paso. And we'll have the game for you right here on Fox Sports San Diego. Well, that's the last spring training game. But what a facility. Oh, it's great. Uh, you and I were there two years ago. Absolutely love it people that work there they embrace the Chihuahuas and they've had some very good success of course winning the championship the year before last Pacific Coast League champions and that's important you think about the minor leaguers and how they come up some of these facilities are so far advanced a little better than you and you rolled through. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know what? It's it's still minor league baseball. I absolutely loved it. But it's it's easier to love it even more when you're at a facility like El Paso has. Hey, 
They mentioned Rod Barajas and not only winning is important when you're a triple a manager but really developing players and he's done a great job yeah i think the communication really sticks out for me for rod barajas a former catcher played in the diamondbacks organization other organizations the los angeles dodgers but he has the ability to connect with players and i think at that level it's very important you have to communicate because not only are you sending guys up to the big leagues you're receiving them from the big leagues as well and this is to right field and in for a base hit. Framil Ray is sober to play it. Carlo headed for third and his brains got himself a single to right. First and third now for the Mariners with one out in the eighth. Yeah, Triple A manager is kind of tough. I mean, you're, you're in a situation where you're trying to keep guys positive that are there. And uh, some of the guys returning, you can't imagine too thrilled to be returning to yeah. the minor leagues. You know, and, and to give an example, and, it, and a name really sticks out in my mind of how you're going to have to be a communicator at AAA is Kevin Quackenbush. Mm -hmm. Remember the, the <laughs> shuttle back and wow. forth. Not only are you giving good information and sending guys up to the big leagues, but when you receive the guy that gets sent down, there's an ability that you have to have. You have to have a connection with guys to get them back on track and make sure they're doing the right things. Yes, it's, it's part of the individual. But I think Rod Barajas being there and being able to go through so many things as a big leaguer is a priority, and it's probably one of those things that just goes unnoticed. But he's done a fabulous job down at AAA. First and third here with one down in the eighth inning. Marjama will take a pitch for a strike over the outside corner. Second plate appearance, grounded out to shortstop in the sixth inning, 0 for 1. Clouding up here at the moment. Cloud covered here around the stadium after lots of sunshine today. They are expecting some precipitation here in the late afternoon. Well, I packed the rain jacket. You're good to go. I just don't have it here at the field. <laughs> so what good is it, really? <laughs> it's really not good. <laughs> I got to check myself. <laughs> you have a raincoat? I do not. I have kind of a, a fleece. That's about it. Yeah, that, that holds water very yeah. well. Did not plan for the rain. I did plan for some chilly weather, but... Inside out swing and a foul off to the right out of play. I know there's a lot of times where you... You make your own meals. Do you have a meal yes, prepared tonight for tonight? Shrimp scampi. Wow. Uh, Donna Tangelos. Wow. I never got the <laughs> offer. I'm just I'm waiting. Yes. I'm not trying to ask if I can come over. Sorry. But are you going to have any extras? <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> there will be no extras. I can promise you that. <laughs> shrimp scampi. That sounds good. Yeah. Where'd you get the shrimp? Uh, Target. <laughs> <laughs> what a, a great spot. I'll get my fresh seafood. So you're saying you don't have extra pasta? There's or is not it? enough for everybody, as it turns out. Just Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> Shrimp from Target. That's right. Yeah, no, it's all good. In the air foul off to the right out of play. Are you saying it's... I try to eat in as much as I possibly can during the spring. I mean, I'm here for five weeks as we are and if you eat out all that time then sometimes you can uh, expand <laughs> and you don't want to do that so I'm trying no, to you eat look right great. and Thank I like you. the facial hair too I don't know about How's it it's, that still, going? it's still up in the air it's a spring training thing right now it's here for game two I'm not sure it'll be here tomorrow I like I just, it I don't know how I feel about it. I really do it off to the right I kind of open it up on Twitter for people to let me know one way or another where that it go? was pretty much keep it which yeah, was like, like it. it was it was high. Now I'm talking to a guy who has some stuff going on there in your face. This is. This I don't is know either. I call it a diversion. It's something. <laughs> it's <exactly laughs> what it is. So I don't know. I mean, that look is definitely not for me. But I, but you know, it looks great on you. I mean, it would probably hold the, <laughs> the shrimp scampi. Absolutely. If, I, if it if it overflowed, how'd you put a bite in? <laughs> Pitch high and tight. That's ball four, and it's going to load the bases here for Kennedy, who is rolling right along. He had retired four in a row and a couple of base hits a walk and now all of a sudden the bases are loaded. I did see that you made some tomato sauce the other day. I did, yes. And you're locked in. It was so good. And I froze a bunch of it so I can run it back out there again 
for some spaghetti dinners. Yeah. That should be great. Yeah, it's I like awesome. spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> Let's check in with Bob Scanlon. Scan what he got. Hey, Sweens, I'm going to have steak and lobster at my pad tonight. You're certainly welcome to come <laughs> nice. over. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know Scan. if you like a Thank nice you. medium, medium rare, what you like, but nice. don't worry. Uh, you know, I'll have a nice little glass of Malbec waiting for you oh, as well. Oh, so. nice. Scan, I love that. I feel so welcomed. <laughs> Anytime, brother. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a team thing. Yes, you know? it is. Oh, uh, here we go. Donnie's not on the team now, huh? I'm just saying, you're always welcome, that's all. Thank you very much. Anytime, Sween Dogs. Don, enjoy that pasta by yourself tonight, buddy. Uh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> all my friends. With all your thoughts. <laughs> Do you go with dessert with that? Uh, no, no dessert. I may have a salad first. I'm taking my own advice to mix in a oh, salad I on I occasion. I love salads. Yeah. So good. And good for you. I think I'm going to go. I'm going to bust out P.F. Chang's tonight. Again? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even pizza. Fouled off to the right out of play, one and one. If you had a go to meal, yep. what is it? Lobster. Oh, so you can go to Scans. Yeah, <laughs> I love lobster. I, love I do it. too. It's my favorite food. I can now, eat it every day. Main lobster? Yes. Because there's a difference. Well, it's a big difference. Yeah. Sweeter. Yeah. Not as tough. I don't think Scan that's going with the steak and lobster tonight no. has. This one will get away. Lobster. Here comes to Carlo from third, and he will score. Lopez had a tough time with it there, and the runners move up. Mariners get a little closer. It's now 8-5. to five. Hey, Swains, I'm going to have dessert at my place, too, by the way. Oh, just, dessert. <laughs> so he's got all back. What's the dessert? What's the dessert? <laughs> Scam man. Creme brulee. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. This is so unbelievable. With, with the, the hand-flamed Yeah, uh, you have that flame top. gadget? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are those things called? Those flame gadgets? I just call it a, a blowtorch. There you go. I like that. You know, yeah. Take it out of your garage. It's multi-purpose. <laughs> you can weld with it one day and finish off your creme brulee the next. Yeah, that is oh, awesome. That's quite a meal. That's making adjustments right there, Five too. star. I, I, I know what direction I'm going. That's an easy set. Well, I actually don't even have a choice. <laughs> well, Swains, you're on the frequent eater plan over at P.F. Chang's, aren't you? Yeah, the special yeah. Gold I, have, cards. I have one of those gold cards, yes. He is a member. I am. Chang's chicken, and then... Mongolian beef. Don't tell me you don't go with the Mongolian beef. I don't beef. go with the Mongolian really? beef. Yeah, I, I mean, it's usually across the table. If I'm eating with somebody, they go with that. But I'm, I'm Chang's chicken. Shrimp dumpling? No. I, I like the, the shrimp app? dumplings, yeah. yes. You know, I'm an app guy, but I don't... I'm, listen, I'm going to... If I do that, I'm going creme brulee over at Scan Man. Because <laughs> I want to see the blowtorch. <laughs> there's a style to that, isn't there, Scan Man? There, there's a technique, no question about it. you got to get it just right. You don't want to overcook it. You know, mm -hmm. just a nice little crispy glaze on top. Is it a bubble? No, <laughs> It shouldn't bubble up. We'll, we'll bring some extra over to Donnie tomorrow, too. I love that. Don't want to leave you two left out there, Don. Thanks, Skip. Anytime, my man. Playoff pitch. And it's fouled down the right field line. Evan White. You, you know, the good thing for, for all of us is that Mud's not here. No. Oh, it's a great thing. I don't think there's, not, there's not enough <laughs> lobster or shrimp in this state, I think, to, to cover yes. Mud. I mean, you're not doing He's a buffet, not, are you, Donnie? He's interested in that stuff oh, right Philly out there. Philly cheese That's what steak, he wants. hot dogs, <laughs> rubs his jumbo brat. Rubs his face in it. It's disgusting. <laughs> I love curly fries. <laughs> Playoff pitch. That was fouled back to the screen. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of choices. A lot of choices. Here. Monster fries. Yep. They're all healthy choices, too, aren't they? <laughs> yes. The picture tells the story right there. Second and third with one out, a run in for the Mariners here in the last of the eighth. Turns on this well out ahead. Now, all the injuries for the Mariners at first base in this camp, early in this camp, Evan White, their first round pick, is getting some playing time. 
Known for his glove. I think Scott Service likes to see that, but put his eyes on him for the last three days because of the injuries in camp. Behind the right field, and it's caught out there in right field. Nicely done by Reyes. Fires back in to second base, trying to double off the runner at second, but can't do it. But a nice diving catch by Fran Mill Reyes in right field for the second out of the inning. You know, Don, there's so many things that I love about this play by Fran Mill. Out in right field, it's the awareness, that first step going, and see that glove hand making a nice catch and the awareness of throwing in. A lot of the outfielders will throw that into the plate thinking they can make a spectacular play. Pitching change from Peoria. It is now eight to six. Padres on top. This is a can't miss event. With two down, and the Padres bring on Jason Jester. The end of the game, he was four and two last season at AAA in El Paso. 5.91 earned run average in 53 games for Jester from Longview, Texas. 26 year old went to Texas A&M. Signed as a 23rd round selection in 2014. Fastball and power curveball by Jester. Anthony Jimenez batting for the first time in this game. Bats with runners at first and second. And a fly ball headed out towards center field. Jankowski out there makes the catch in front of the warning track to end the inning. Two runs for the M's. It's 8 6 Padres to the ninth we go.
inning as clouds have covered the Orioles Stadium here and we are seconds away I think from seeing some precipitation in the area I'm no meteorologist get your get your fleece out I'm not even a good baseball announcer nonetheless <laughs> meteorologist <laughs> James Pazos is into the game here as he becomes the sixth arm to use today by Scott Service 59 games last year four and five with a 3.86 earned run average and 53 and two-thirds innings pitched for the left-hander. Mariners getting a couple back in the bottom of the eighth inning. Well, Javi Guerra is going to lead it off here for San Diego. Guerra with a single to left field his last time up. Took over at shortstop for Freddy Galvis, who had a base hit today. Actually, two of them. It was uh, two for three in the game today for the Padres. Single in the seventh inning for Guerra. Went to left field with that base hit. Jam there and fouls it back to the screen. One and one. Padres got a three run home run from Austin Hedges in the fourth inning. And a solo shot by Rafi Lopez in the sixth inning. Part of their attack today. It runs 10 hits. Day to day when Clayton Richards started the game with two innings, gave up two runs, a two run home run to Gene Segura. Inside for ball two, two and two. Now you see the clouds we're talking about, but now you're starting to smell the rain. Yeah, I smell rain. It's coming. Supposed to be through the night, perhaps, and then uh, late morning should go away in time for our game with the Dodgers tomorrow on Fox Sports San Diego. Bobby Guerra leading it off here in the ninth inning. Full count now with Fran Mill Reyes waiting on deck, and there's a look at the cloud situation and soon precipitation. And again, Dodgers and Padres tomorrow at noon. I have it for you right here on Fox Sports San Diego. Now the schedule, scheduled starters for that game, Denelson Lamette. Up the middle into center field, and Guerra's two for two. Leadoff single. Starting things here in the ninth inning for the Padres. Well, that's shortstop position today with Freddie Galvis and also Javi Guerra. Very productive offensively. They've handled their own on defense. A lot of two-strike hitting from that position today, too. And they've combined to go four for five today. Lead runner on and brings up Fran Mill Reyes. Reyes grounded into a 6-4-3 double play in the seventh inning. James Paxton started today for the Mariners. Two shutout innings. Giving up a hit, no runs, walked about it, didn't strike anybody out. That'll get away, and moving up to second base is Guerra. So in a scoring position now with nobody out in the ninth inning. Well, Pazos looks like he's trying to crowd Reyes with that fastball in. Doesn't look like he has that glove side command. 
Fran Mill Reyes made a nice defensive play in right field, making a diving catch and inning a go. And 22 year old from the Dominican Republic. Mentioned earlier, led the Padres minor league system with 25 home runs and 102 RBIs last year. Playing at Double A San Antonio, he was there all year. Played 135 games. With those 25 home runs, anytime you have over 100 RBIs in a shortened minor league season, that's pretty impressive. They like this young man in these situations, 2 0 count. Look for him to unload. Got a lot of time last year in spring training, and so far this year, getting a lot of chance to play as well. Strike call to high strike, and it's now two and one. I see the reaction. I don't think he liked that call, but that's not something you want to fire at in a 2 0 situation. Fly ball headed out towards deep right field. Back towards the track and the wall, and Reyes is taking it out of the yard. Third home run of the day for the Padres. This is a two-run shot. Opposite field for Fran Mill Reyes. And the Padres open up their lead 10-6. Well, he didn't like that strike call, but he comes back and takes it out of the yard on the next pitch. Pretty interesting because I thought it was the same location after he missed that first pitch on the 2-0 on the count. Then he gets on top of this pitch, riding it out to right field. Lots of power in that swing. So a two-run shot. A little bit more of a pad now for the Padres. More breathing room on top 10-6. to six. Alan Craig getting his second plate appearance. He walked in the seventh inning. Took over at first base and debuted today in a Padres uniform for Eric Hosmer. He was kind enough to join us after he was done with his work today. And Hosmer was one for three before Alan Craig took over at first base. Rain is falling here. Right now, just a light rain. I might have to take a little jog to my <laughs> to my car after this game. What do you think? Bounced in for Pazos, and it's two and one. I mean, if you look at the track record of my spring training in 2018, it hasn't been good. <laughs> Bad clothing. <laughs> Did not know it was going to rain. The raincoats are out there. On the ground to third base. Pick there and the throw to first in time to retire Craig for the first time today. And that's the first out of the ninth inning. I think I'm better than that. I mean, <laughs> Usually, I mean, it's not like this is your first rodeo no. or anything. I mean, You've been here before. <laughs> if you have a raincoat and you look at the forecast yeah. and it might rain, bring your raincoat. <laughs> Easy as that. I have a Fox Sports San Diego fleece that I'm going to be featuring. And I don't think it's, it's not like rain resistant or anything. No, I think it's going to absorb the rain. Yes. Which could be part of the issue. You've got to get home to get up that scampi. Exactly. And lock the door to make sure that nobody <laughs> comes over. <laughs> Unannounced visitors like Bob Scanlon. Yes. <laughs> He's locked into his meal. Oh, he's all set. Whoa. Got the poncho. Poncho, the wind. I might have to search for a trash bag, cut out <laughs> the part where I can put my head through it. And Wrap yourself in a hefty bag. <laughs> Make an adjustment. <laughs> Fantastic look for you, too. Yes. Arias sends one out towards deep right center field. That struck pretty well. And that ball's going to one-hop the wall. Vicious ricochet out there. Arias to second base standing with a one-out double. Third Padres hit of the inning. You know, Don, we heard from Andy Green this morning in his presser that you, he has the ability to go the other way with power, and he's shown it. This is the third time he has driven that ball to right center. You see him track that baseball and have that power element. He's using all of it to go the other way. 
Just has a nice bat path, and that's what's really showing early in this camp. Second time he's been on today, walked in the seventh. Now he's doubled with one out in the ninth inning. Webster Rivas coming up here. Rivas struck out swinging in the seventh inning. Second base with one down, two runs already in for the Padres here in the ninth inning. And that'll get away. Urias will try for third and get there without a problem standing. Second wild pitch of the inning. You can see the glove side has been a very difficult thing for Pazos today. So this is what's got to happen. <laughs> I got to make an adjustment. I don't know if I cut out the arms, but I have, I don't know if my squash will get through this, this but is, I'm going to give it a good That's unsafe. You shot. realize that, that, that. That's like, you're not supposed to do that because you can, like, suffocate. Yeah, it's that's a, why you, 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 you eventually get it where you can go through. <laughs> oh, it looks so good, too. That is going to cover, like, nothing. It is. You're going to be sopping and wet. <laughs> I'm going to feel comfortable about it. <laughs> Rivas with a swing and a miss. I don't think this is a large That's, enough. I don't think it's going to work. Trash bag. No. This is better. But I, if you could help me. <laughs> I don't think anybody can help you. Cut out those arms <laughs> so at least that'll be good. I do think you have to cut out the arms because you the do. elastic you do. thing here. Can you help me with it? I can try. I'll give you another. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. You're all set. Oh, no. You I actually up. made the... I, you messed I made up the my poncho. All worse. <laughs> Stick to the scampi. <laughs> yeah. uh, in the air to left field, down the line towards the corner and foul. Yeah, that's not going to work. I think you're just going to have to get wet. I think that's the problem. The towel I could yep. use. Maybe I could use your sweatshirt if you're not using it. Yeah, I'm probably going to be using it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you messed up my poncho. <laughs> I tried to make an additional hole and it didn't work. And just made the first one bigger. Yeah. This will get away. And that is ball three. Three and two. No advance at third base there. Urias remains at third. I thought I was locked in. I got that over the headset very yeah, easily. Very good. But things went downhill it fast. Went <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind if my arms get wet, but yeah. I don't want my uni to get wet. No, especially if we get to run it back out there again this week. Well, I'm going to wash it. Do you have a washer and dryer in your place? Uh, I have a group washer and dryer I can use, a community washer and dryer. Well, when I come over for dinner, when I get that invitation, I'll probably yeah. just bring over my uni <laughs> so I can wash it. <laughs> sure. Now the walk here in what has been a tough inning for Pazos. While we're on this topic, what are we wearing tomorrow for polos? Are we going with gray tomorrow? That decision has to be made. Right now, Bob Scanlon, are you part of this conversation at all? You have uh, a vote. Scan and I will probably talk over dinner <laughs> yeah. about what we're going to wear. Yeah, that's, that's dessert topic right there. Yeah. We're, we're uh, enjoying our creme brulee. Creme brulee. Yeah. All right, well, maybe somebody can text me to we'll, let me know what we're we'll wearing. We'll let you know. Well. Okay, great. <laughs> Just don't wear it tonight because you'll be dripping scampi juice well, all over. We don't need any <laughs> It's not camo on Sunday. Your polo. It's not camo no, Sunday. We don't have the camos. We do have, we've worn blue, and today we wore black, so I was thinking probably gray tomorrow. But... Not up to me. Oh, you don't have gray. That's no. when last year. You were green. Oh, you were, so you were gray short, weren't you? Yes. You didn't have gray last year? No. I did not have gray. Wow. He had a uniform malfunction. I did. So I guess we're going with blue then. It's been decided. I don't think these golf shirts should be spandex driven. So I think my gray one didn't work. So I think blue is our power color tomorrow. You all right with that? Oh, that's great. So the gray was just showing off the muscles too much? You sort of have a European look uh, going there? So you did, didn't it get is. it or you didn't like it? Which, well, is, which is it? European cut does not go well. Okay, so <laughs> basically you didn't like With it. With my body type? I see. 
<laughs> but the blue and black, they feel great. <laughs> the black is very trimming, isn't it? Yes, yes. it is. <laughs> trimming and slimming. Hey, Chris Kemp right there, guys. You know who he is. He's the architect of uh, the international draft that's taken place. $80 million were in his hands to distribute to these young players. He's done a fabulous job with the the job that they have back in the backfields, and you're starting to see that impact from Latin America. Oh, how fun has it been to see some of these young 17- and 18-year-olds getting called up from the extended spring into these big league games? And that's one of the reasons Chris is out here to watch his young protégés prove themselves worthy of playing in these big league games. They've handled themselves really well, guys. Oh, we've seen some of them in the Futures game the last couple of years. Padres on deck and the guys that are going to be coming up, and they've been fun to watch. You know, Bob, we had that conversation uh, out in the backfields over there about how these younger players are just acting the part. That's what's been impressive for me. Not only are they the body types, and you see the actions that they have, the swings, but they, they don't look scared, and they should be because this is big league camp. Ground ball right side. Adams will go to first base, and a run will score. In from third base is Urias with the 11th Padres run of the day. Padres on top, 11 to 6. Scott Service has jumped out of the dugout. Looked like he's going to make a pitching change here. With two down in the top of the ninth inning, a pitching change for the M's. Padres with a few runs here in the ninth. Enjoy 11 to 6 lead from Peoria Stadium. This may look like a few dollars. The seventh pitcher used by Scott Service in this game. Pazos departs responsible for a runner at second base and charged with those three runs that Padres have pushed across here in the ninth inning. Jump pitch hitter is Nate Easley. 248, four homers and 26 runs batted in last year in 81 games. Easily a 23rd round pick in 2016. As he takes a strike over the outside corner. Hometown is Glendale, Arizona, right here. Beard at Lake Elsinore and Fort Wayne a year ago.
bounces in and nicely blocked there. No advance for the runner at second base in Rivas. Well, you got to love these opportunities, Don. When you called over to big league camp and you have the ability to get these, these much-needed at-bats, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal because it's 11-6 right now, but it's a huge deal for Nate Easley. Being able to come up to big league camp and getting an opportunity, you never know when you're going to open eyes. Evens up at 2-2. Two and two. Fastball on the outside corner there to Easley. Twenty-two-year-old. Batting with two down on the top of the ninth inning. Padres on top, eleven to six. Look out, up and in. Single runs in the sixth, seventh, and eighth innings for San Diego. Three runs here so far in the ninth, and looking for more with two down and a runner at second. On the ground towards shortstop, easily trying to beat it out. Throw in the dirt, dug out nicely, and easily he's retired. But the Padres scored three in the top of the ninth inning, taking an 11-6 lead to the bottom of the ninth. Tander on here trying to finish it off in the bottom of the ninth inning. Really pitched well with his opportunities last year. I thought handled himself very well, composed. Gives you that different look, a little deceptive delivery. Something to take into what he's trying to do. He has a good breaking ball, but he liked to spin it and get that early strike on the breaking ball. A lot of it's for swing and miss. He's going to have to try to do that so he can get them off his fastball a little bit early in counts. Ian Miller, who has played the entire game, two for three in the ball game. A three-run top of the ninth inning has given the Padres more breathing room. On top, eleven to six in the bottom of the ninth. To center field and on the move is Jankowski in the left center to make that catch. Got a good jump and handles out number one of the ninth inning. McGrath last year getting into 17 big league games with the Padres. 2.84 earned run average. 
working in a total of 19 innings. Late round selection to 36th round selection in 2014. Well, I think the dynamic of the bullpen, which I think is going to be, again, the strength of the club. Different matchups they have the ability to do. And Kyle McGrath slots in there because you think what Brad Hand has done to this bullpen and structured it and given Andy the opportunity to put him in different spots. It's almost nice to have another left-hander in that bullpen. So Kyle comes into that play, and that's going to be his task coming into spring training. A really good off-speed off right there with the changeup because it's out of that same motion over the top. Trying to pick that out, but it really looks like a fastball coming out of his hands. Listening to Andy Green, it sounds like uh, Brad Hand is going to be used a little bit differently this year, perhaps, as a closer, not just the ninth inning. If he needs that out in the eighth, he's going to go to him. I think Andy is, is very uh, forward-thinking, and why I say that is that if you're two, three, four, maybe five guys are in the lineup are coming up in the eighth inning, well, that's where you want to use Brad Hand. It was high-leverage situations that you come in. Swing and a miss for Danny Munoz, and he is out number two in the ninth inning for a strikeout for Kyle McGrath since coming in. Well, you see the fastball combination, but you saw changeup, fastball in, and then a changeup to put him away. Nice pitching by McGrath. Two down in the ninth. Donovan Walton coming up here. Rain falling a little harder now here in Peoria. Drop down low for ball one. This is the hardest it's rained since the drizzle started an inning ago. And now we're in pretty good. Just in time for Mark Sweeney yeah. to try to leave. To find another trash bag <laughs> yeah. after I started constructing my first one. <laughs> Completely destroyed the first one. It's unusable. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can lay it over my head. <laughs> but the poncho is terrific. It's holding up very well. I wish I had a poncho. Two oh two Walton. On to center field. Broken bat. Little looper drops in for a two out base hit. So Walton aboard with two down. Well, sometimes I think it's pretty selfish to ask for another one, but I'm gonna go a different this, direction. I think this one could work. I'm not really even do. gonna give you an opportunity to ruin my next trash bag, okay. but this is one of those probably I want to call it a 17 gallon. I would say this one's going to be much 20? more effective. The first, the first one was a tall kitchen bag, which did not work. This is more of the <laughs> that's industrial. a European cut yeah. trash bag. <laughs> this one gives me enough yeah. opportunity to make that poncho. Now that being said, don't touch this. <laughs> a little bit low. You're going to make the hole for your head. Get your dome in there. Yeah, I, I, yeah. that's that's going to happen. But I don't okay. think I'm going to really touch this right now. Okay. It's going to be after the game, and it's going to be raining. Ah, oh, very disappointing. You're not going to let us in? <laughs> no. <laughs> the first one was so well put together. You ruined it. <laughs> Off balance cut. Even to count of one and one. I think it, that was easily going to be a, tough to get over. On the sides. <laughs> there was little room for error. No. I mean, that's the thing. Exactly. I, I mean, there was very little room. But this one is perfect. I think this one's going to, you're going to be all set with this. I really do. I think you're going to be in very good shape. Yep. It's actually warming. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. McGrath dealing with his fourth hitter here for the Mariners in the ninth. We have the Padres on top, 11 to 6. Trying to finish off the Mariners today. Grab back-to-back -back victories. Well, I love the, the I love the offense today. Saw some young arms, the left-handers, Lucchese and Lauer. So you're seeing the future, but I really love the offense. They're productive at bats. A lot of pitches seeing. But there's a lot to like today. Yes, it's a spring training game. You've seen 11-6. There's good and bad with every day. 
But I think Matt Stairs, the new hitting coach, has to be very pleased. Back-to-back -back days where they've seen a lot of pitches, pitches is information. But I think the shortstop position today, Freddie Galvis and Javi Guerra has played well, but also the catching position. We saw Hedges and Lopez show their power. A lot of positives today. 2-2 Two -two pitch coming up. And a swing and a miss. He struck him out, and the Padres win. Kyle McGrath able to wrap it up. A couple of strikeouts in the ninth inning. And the Padres come away with an 11-6 victory against the Seattle Mariners. We will step aside and come back with more from Peoria Stadium in Arizona right after this.